Ten years ago, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem that no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire... LCS Hockey. And we're off. You give us two hours, we'll give you bad radio. It is the LCS Hockey Radio Show, brought to you as always by BackpagePress.com and by the number one non-updated hockey site in all the land, LCSHockey.com. LCS, you're welcome. All right, Mike Dell, i got to let you know before we even start on the monologue that it was all major minority tonight. I have nothing to do with this monologue. Yeah. It's all. It all right, got, I have mixed emotions about this because major minority. Right, it's probably going to be funny, but at the same time, it's probably going to be making fun of either me, Tina Fey, or uh, someone else I enjoy. So, I don't well, know. I just want you to know that uh, when he sent me, uh, you know, when he sent me uh, over the monologue today, he said these were all ins- uh, all these jokes were inspired from your tweets over on the twitters. All right. Well, that yeah, so they're all they're all <laughs> at Michael Paul Dell inspired tweets. All right, Mike Dell, here we go. Right. In an attempt to fool consumers, the artificial sweetener aspartame is going to be rebranded yeah. into something called AmnioSweet. Yeah, Outraged sure. by this, the health food community says that they would never try to fool customers and to prove it will rename their own products Tasteless Disgusting Shit. Oh, how about that? Tasteless yeah. Disgusting Shit. Let's see what I... Now, is that a real story, Mike Dell? Amino yeah, I think sweet. it's Amino Sweet, right? Or, or maybe it's an Amino Sweet. I don't know. No, it's uh, Amino Sweet. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, yeah. All right, well, no, they're changing stopped. the name so people don't know aspartame. They're like, oh, oh, look, this doesn't have aspartame. I'll buy this. No, it has aspartame in it. You just don't know. All right, but then they'll just say, oh, it has Amino Sweet in it. It's the same, same thing. What's the difference? Sweet. Yeah, but look at Major Minority ripping it right out of the headlines. Yeah, yeah, how about that? He's topical. He's like law and order. Yeah, All right, Mike Dell, here's another one now. With Urban Moving Systems becoming another yeah. piece in the 9-11 conspiracy puzzle, an outraged George Bush exclaimed, This is all a lie. 9-11 was not a conspiracy, and any ideas of a cover-up should be shot down quicker than Flight 800. <laughs> Oops. I mean, shit. Yeah. Okay, that, very good. Yeah, Urban Moving Systems. That's been around for a few years, but I just saw a nice little uh, video about it or recently. So I'm like, oh, all right, I'll Twitter that out. And I Twittered out some other information about it. But it was like an Israeli moving company uh, where five guys were dancing, about three guys were dancing on the roof saying, hey, look, at, we're here to document the event. How would you know there's an event to document? You know? Ah. It was odd. Yeah, see. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't read your tweets anymore. I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really don't. I just, I just wait till I see RT at Sean Leahy, then I read that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I know you're, you're joking around. Speaking of which, did you see them? See them Islanders third jersey? Yeah, we'll, we'll save that for the hockey talk because uh, we got to right. get to that. Yeah. Uh, hackers are in the news uh, once again, Mike Dell. This time, invading Jerry Sandusky's privacy yeah. uh, while finding no evidence of wrongdoing from his second mile charity on his computer. Prosecutors are now confident that he's definitely attracted to young boys. When asked why, the DA stated that his hard drive contained full seasons of 30 Rock, Baby Mama, and an e-copy of Bossy Pants. Bossy oh. Pants. So, well, okay. at least he's taking, uh, you know, he's kind of making fun of Tina Fey, but he's not saying she looks like a big, ugly man, but a nice, attractive young boy. That's something. Well, either way, it's still a penis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no matter how you spin but, the record there, Mike Dell. But uh, I haven't tweeted out so much about Sandusky, but I, I did get a, a request to look into the, the, the missing DA, because uh, I don't know if you heard that story later. I tweeted something about it a couple of days ago. But uh, the, the DA, who was originally supposed to uh, review his case or something back in 2002, or maybe it was the 98 one, I can't remember, but he just went missing uh, a little bit after that. Like he, he, But he decided not to press the charges against Sandusky, so it would seem odd that, that he would then be killed for that, you know, but, uh... Well, you know what else I heard today, uh, Mike Dell? Uh, 
I heard. Did, did you hear the story about Joe Pa? And he transferred his house over to the to the wife about I don't know six, seven. You know, maybe it's about four or five months ago. He transferred her the house over <laughs> to her name for a dollar because apparently he knew that this was all coming down. Oh no! And so, in order to not be, you know, I guess to protect his assets, he transferred everything over to her name. No, this is another thing uh, I, I was told. Uh, did you hear about Sandusky's retirement dinner back when he retired? No. Like, Paterno didn't go. No, I didn't hear and, that. Yeah, that, like Sandusky retired in 99, and like the first instance of this happened around 98, and the rumor is that he was forced out back then because they knew this was going on, and because uh, he was only 55 and he retired. And all these other coaches around college football showed up at the retirement dinner, you know, to honor Jerry Sandusky, but, but Paterno didn't. And he never said why he never went. So. Look at that. Yeah. All Michigan right. Frank, well, Michigan Frank told me that, so don't. I haven't confirmed that. Look into Michigan Frank. And Michigan uh, Frank, I hate that. You know I hate that guy. He's a good tipster. We'll talk Michigan a Frank douche. a little bit later. Yeah. Fuck him. All right, Mike, Mike Dell. Uh, all right, uh, yeah, it's Mike Dell. All right, we already introduced you. Anyways, Mike Dell, on the line, we got a call. It's uh, it's the host of the Super Great Internet Show, heard right here every Friday on the uh, on the Blog Talk Radio, right on this feed, right here, Mike Dell. The LCS What's, Hockey uh, Network. Yeah, the LCS Hockey Network. Let's welcome to the show, Security Guy Irv. Are you there? Hello, Uncle Larry. Hello, Number One Nine SGI Security Guy Irv. Right here on the LCS Hockey Show. Irv, What's wow, up, what a Irv? surprise! I wasn't expecting you. But now that you're here, Irv, can I? Why do you call Larry Uncle Larry? That's a good question, number one nine. <laughs> um, yeah, I... It's based on Cousin Brandon. You know, if oh, you're Cousin I see. Brandon, right, yeah. then why isn't Larry Uncle Larry? Well, Cousin oh, Brandon God. is actually the cousin of our pal Dave. Larry is really the uncle of no one. So, well, he, well, he has a niece and a, a, two nieces, Larry, or one niece, or what yeah, is it? Two, niece. yeah. two, two nieces. But no one really so knows he they is are. So. Uncle. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, suppose you're cool. correct. Yeah. Deal with it, Mike Dell. All right, I apologize. I'm going to start calling you Grandpa Dell. <laughs> That's right. I have a lot of grand cats. <laughs> so there we go. Exactly. So, Irv, I so, wanted to make sure yeah. I got to you first out of the gate because you called in a few weeks ago, and I, I, I hung up on you accidentally. And then afterwards, you're like, you big-time me. You big-time me. But, you know, so I wanted to make sure I got you first. What's up, Irv? Well, well thank you so much for letting me on. Um, I just have – no, see – uh, number one nine had questions for me, so now I have questions for number one nine. Uh, now, nice. number one nine, I don't like you will have <laughs> conspiracies about a lot of different things. Yeah, and I noticed that on on the on the twitters. Uh huh. I, what do you not have a conspiracy about? What do you think is legitimate? Cats. Uh, Why well, I need some examples, like you know. Nothing, Irv. There's okay. nothing, Irv. <laughs> like, like, yeah, lots of Larry's anything. an uncle. That's legitimate. I can vouch for that. Larry's an uncle. You know. You tried to disprove that three minutes ago. <laughs> well, I was proven wrong <laughs> by my own memory. <laughs> okay. Like, why will the Ed not race me? Is there a conspiracy there? Uh, he's a very old man, and he was never okay. much of an athlete. And uh, okay. Although he, tr- he tries to pretend to be a, you know, he's a great athlete. I think that's why won't he fight? Why won't he fight her then? Because he's an old man who is not much of an athlete, right. and he likes to pretend that he's an athlete. Yeah. All right. Okay. How about the conspiracy with uh, with Tina Fey becoming uh, vice president of the United States? I, I wish that, that would be true. See, I thought you were going to say the conspiracy about her being a man, and I'd have been I'd have been outraged. I that would be true. Yeah. Well, I I couldn't do that to you, uh, number one nine, because Tina Fey isn't. Unattractive. She's a, you know, what I throw out of that freaking crackers, uh, I don't know. But That's she's right. not unattractive. That's exactly right, Irv. She's not unattractive. How about that, Larry? That's a ringing endorsement. All right, well, that's, that's uh, yeah, well, that's a ringing endorsement from she's disgusting and ugly and has a penis. She's not unattractive, I guess, is about as close as you can get to she's, you know, smoking hot. Yeah. Well, she's not smoking hot, but she's, oh. she's decent. No. Yeah. Well, well, Larry Everybody. and I are we're, we're, we're working on our next uh, top eleven uh, ladies, right, Larry? Because we did that a couple years ago, and uh, yeah. we're, we're compiling names, 
you know, right now, right, Larry? That's what we're doing. We're doing yes. research. Absolutely. And, I got a whole list of names right now in my notebook. And I think the stipulation this time, Larry, should be uh, these ladies who make the cut this time, they, uh, they, they, they couldn't have appeared on any previous form of the list. See what I'm saying? Uh, All new blood. Yeah. Damn it. See you later, That's JoJo. A really good idea. <laughs> I don't know if you ever had JoJo on your list, have you? Did you? Oh, all right. Hello, JoJo. JoJo's all right. back. So who the blue, blue hell is JoJo? Um, yeah, you, you don't want to know her. She's a singer okay. and an actress. Well, Larry likes to go Sandusky kind of. <laughs> no, she's like 23, 24. Now. She's fine. <laughs> well, hey, she was never on the list before. All right, Irv, uh, what else is going on, Irv? Well, I'm, in, I'm preparing for, for my show on Friday. I'm going to send Uncle Larry my notes really soon. Uh, wow, you guys have notes here? when you do a show? Yeah. Actually, we do. We prepare. Huh. We that do is prepare. crazy. Hey, oh, let, let's pull back the curtain a little bit on, on the blog talk, Larry, because uh, I heard you kind of uh, remark uh, under well, when it was happening. But uh, it used to be in the old days of blog talk when the show started, Larry. Remember, they'd count down over our uh, phones there. Three, two, one, blog talk radio. And then yeah. would, the theme music will kick in. But like about six months ago or so, it now goes like three, two, one, your show is on the air or something. And then there's like a like a five, six second pause. Uh -huh. And then it says blog talk radio, right? Isn't that how it Yeah. And I swear that pause gets longer and longer each week, right? Yeah, like I'm almost afraid like I didn't cue the music. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I heard you say, uh, you, you said something. Uh, yep, or something. Yeah, and, uh, yes, or yikes, or yeah, something. Yeah, it seemed like the show wasn't going to start. And every week I feel that way, like, oh, it's not going to start. And then uh, it usually does. But, yeah. It makes it fun, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Like, can't now, Irv, you've never handled the actual switchboard of your show, right? That's always Uncle Larry. Absolutely so not. There is no way on the planet Earth that I would be good enough to do that. You and Uncle Larry are great at it. And I know that I would find some way to screw it up, and we would have dead air. Now, now, Irv, your show is uh, on Fridays at, uh, what, what, 6 o'clock, 6.30? Which is it? I forget. 6, yeah, 6 p.m. 6 o'clock Eastern, yeah, 3 o'clock Pacific. Now, what, would you like to give a little preview of this week's show, or you still got to discuss it with Uncle Larry, or anything you could, uh, you know, tease? Well, we're, we're going to definitely talk about movies. Um, I went to go see End Time with Cookie last week. I'm going to give a review oh. about that. And we also saw Limitless. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Movies that I absolutely hated. And um, <laughs> three movies in three different categories that I just thought were marvelous films. You know, not to take away from what you and Uncle Larry do with the top 11, but... I'm going to give my three, and Larry's going to give quite a few of his. That's right, Mike, though. We're going to do now, Irv, when you said, uh, it, for a minute there, it sounded like you said uh, you, uh, Limitless, uh, In Time, or whatever, movies I absolutely hated, but you meant like comma, like another thing, right? Like not comma, I hated these two movies, but comma, another topic, movies actually, right? That yeah, is correct. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. is correct, number one night. Yes. Yeah, because I didn't want you to give away your review before the show, you know? Oh, no. I'm not going to give that away. And also we're going to preview uh, yet another pay-per-view from the UFC and yet another yeah. pay-per-view from the WWE. Well, the UFC, yeah, uh, that's th this Saturday. we got uh, Dan Henderson and Shogun Hua, right? Is that what it is? You've got it right on the money. That is correct. That looks like a good card, too, because uh, Kung Lee and Vanderlei Silva and then uh, Uriah Faber and uh, Brian Bowles, right? Is that the card? You got it nailed. You have a photographic yeah. memory. <laughs> That's right, Herb. And uh, so, who do you? Well, well I, I'll save that for your show. But uh, you can preview that over your show. But what about or what, what, Would you watch it on Fox? Because Larry and I are going to talk about this a little later. Did you watch the UFC on Fox? The big uh, Junior Dos Santos Cain Velasquez fight. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Cookie and I both watched it. She watched it live. I taped it, and then watched it after I got home because Cookie and I went out dancing. Look at you. Now, uh, what do you think, uh, did you like the show? Because a lot of people were upset. They're like, oh, it was silly. It was, uh, the fight only lasted like, you know, 90 seconds or whatever. And then uh, the rest of the time they're just sitting around talking. But that's pretty much what they want on Fox, right? The little preview show and then the fight and then whatever. It sounds like that's what they wanted, but I think they should have had a contingency plan just in case something like that would happen. That the, If the fight went under, 
three rounds that they would have something to show, and they had a, a great fight yeah. earlier that they could have shown. And I just think that was Dana White's stubbornness. Now, I think Dana um, is a really nice guy, and he's, he's a wonderful promoter and president. But I just think he dropped the ball on that one. Well, I don't know if that's his stubbornness. I think it's uh, probably Fox calling the shots there, and he would just do whatever he he had to do to get on Fox, you know. But, um, but the, the fight you mentioned, Clay Guida of Ben Henderson, I, I didn't see it, uh, but I heard it was fight of the year candidate, right? Absolutely, raw bones, knuckles, fists flying everywhere. You know, something that would happen, well, at least the Ed would think it would happen, that we would be able to go to a, a decision, but nah, it would be security guy or going to walk over. And you know what, we, I would, would you... either have you either referee it or I would have Uncle Larry referee it, one of the two. I, I don't know, actually, I would have you both referee That would be such an epic fight. We would need two referees. <laughs> I, don't know, I think Larry, Uncle Larry, would be the better ref. I'd be, uh, I don't know, you're a bigger fellow, Larry. You can br- break those two combatants. Up. Well, I think you would probably take a shot at the end if you had the opportunity. <laughs> probably. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> Put a kick to the kidneys or something yeah. when he's not looking. But uh, uh, Irv, I was going to say something about that. Oh, would you be like a Clay Guida fighter, Irv? Like just nonstop action, full all aggressiveness. I'm a pretty aggressive fighter. I would so say if you had that to, if you had to compare yourself to a UFC fighter, who would it be? Or? I don't have the length of John Jones. Uh, that's what the I have say. probably the step, but I fight a lot like John Jones. Oh, really? I'm, I'm, wow. I'm fairly aggressive when I fight, but I also have no rules when I fight. In a street fight, there are no rules. So you're more so, like a Cactus Jack, is what you're saying. I'm a combination between Cactus Jack, uh, Clay Guida, and and John Jones, but I talk mess like Muhammad Ali. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Look at him. He's got it all. Total package. Yeah. Well, well, thank well, you. Well, let's bring the Ed on and see what he thinks uh, of all your... Oh, the Ed's uh, here as well. Wow, what a, what yeah. a stellar evening we have. Because we had nothing Ed. planned, you know? Yeah. Ed, Irv's <laughs> here talking trash on you right now. Who? Irv! FDI, yeah. security guy <laughs> Irv, and don't you forget it. Listen, man. You ain't nothing. Well, well, the end, Irv just said, I asked him uh, what UFC fighter he would compare himself to, and he said uh, like probably Clay Guida and John Jones and maybe a little Cactus Jack from the wrestling mixed in. Now, if you were a UFC fighter, the end, who would you be? Open Matt Warrior. <laughs> All right, that's would you, would you climb in and like shake Dusty. the cage? I, I shake the damn cage off off his hinges, <laughs> and then I'd slam uh, the cage on Irv's head, and then I'd kick him from in his head, and then I'd rip off one of his ears and throw it in the crowd, and then I'd rip off his nose, and then I'd take it and put it in place of his toes. Hmm. I mean, I do all kind of stuff. Hey, listen, I just saw a thing on the news. Guess who else is, is having a top 11? Oh, no. Oh, Christ. Who? Who's that, Ed? This Jerry Sandusky is doing his top 11 hot young actors. <laughs> I don't think that's true, yet. Of all time, uh-huh. yeah. But then I got another breaking story. Uh-huh. Did you know Larry' last name is Sandusky? So we got Jerry <laughs> I Sandusky. I did not know that. Larry Sandusky. That's why he be crying about it when we talk about the Penn State and uh-huh. all that. And Herb, Herb, like a distant relative fag from the Sandusky clan. Herb, please, Dad. Herb, cool Sandusky. <laughs> cool <Pepper> Sandusky. <laughs> please. But well, we can settle this right listen, after listen, the listen, show listen. tonight. Man, you won't even race me, man. You can't even beat me in no race. Well, what are you be- doing after the show? Yeah, I'm walking. What are you doing? I can come to your house and we can race anywhere no, you I want. Don't. And don't say bad things about yeah. Uncle Larry. He's the best yeah, co-host. Right. No disrespect, number one night. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when we do the fight, I got a, I got a move called the pistol move. And I'm going to do that on Earth. Yeah. I just pull out my pistol and shoot him. Pow! He's done. Uh, I don't even worry about it. I won't, I, won't worried, no, I won't have no drop of sweat on me at all, man. 
But you can't shoot what you can't see. Listen, man, you ain't fat. You a little short, fat dude, man. What are you going to do to me? You was like, you look like a goddamn, you was the prototype for Weeble Wobble, man. <laughs> the well, prototype for Weeble Wobble will kick your ass. Can okay. I say that on the LCF Hockey Show? Yeah, go ahead, Herb. Yeah, the kid is hey, hey. I'll take you and throw you to the side, then I'll grab Cookie and make that cookie crumble. Ooh. <laughs> In fact, you know what? I won't even fight you. I'll have Cookie fight you so I can sit back yeah. and laugh. You know what? I'll take Cookie and then I'll make her my special cookie. <laughs> I don't know. What does that even mean? I'll make her my special cookie. That's what I'm saying. All right. Let's I already see. know. Ed's going to beat up a six-foot-tall former stripper. Hmm. Oh. I have a problem with that. She ain't six foot tall. Yes, she is. No, she's not. I, she was six feet tall the last time I looked at her. Uh, last she's time much she was taller here, than I. She so, yeah. See, now he's scared. He's scared like 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 a little hoe. That's what he is. Scared like a little uh, hoe. Listen, man, listen. I'll take you, and I will take your head. And spin it around so you're looking behind you at all times. There is no way any such thing will ever happen. I will slap you right in the mouth, and you will <laughs> cry like a little baby. You'll cry like that baby over at your house, and I'll oh, eat yeah. your children. Do you know, <laughs> You'll eat your children. I have never cried in my whole entire life. Well, yeah, I guess this will be a first time for everything. No, you have yeah. cried before. You, you cried, cried every before. time. You were supposed to fight me, and you backed out because you're yellow. You're not I black. You're up. yellow. And I rented out the palm. <laughs> I rented out that place at the palms for us to fight. I spent forty six thousand dollars on a goddamn place in the palms for me and you to fight. We sold about nine hundred tickets, and you didn't show up, man. Wow, what about that, Irv? He, he sold 900 well, tickets and he didn't show up. Well, that that's awful funny because uh, Strike Force is fighting here at the Palms on Friday night. And I think I have a little in with Dana White and with uh, with Lorenzo Fertitta and with, with the Maloofs. And I think we can uh, rent that out just before the Strike Force fight at 4.30 on Friday night. And we can do this. We can settle the score once and for all. I will kick your ass. Ooh, hey. I got, I got, I got a doctor's appointment Friday. <laughs> well, you can understand that. Everybody's got a doctor's appointment. What do you want him to do? See, he's shucking and jiving. He's ducking me. He uh, doesn't well, want to I, I don't know if you've heard, but the head's got a hernia. Yeah, I got a hernia, man. From from what? Playing tiddlywinks? That's no. true, Ed. You don't do much. Probably banging all these women. <laughs> That's oh, right. He got a hernia please. from banging all these ladies. Uh, yeah, in the magazines, he's just putting his stuff up against against the magazine cover and saying that's banging a woman. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, man. Listen, last year, I didn't want to tell nobody this, but last year, Irvin Cookie invited me over for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh-huh. And so I said, well, you know, I'll go over there, you know, I'll see what these kids are about. You know, this fool, he cut his turkey with scissors. <laughs> listen to this. That silly. Not only that, but there wasn't even a turkey. He had a poster of a turkey and was cutting it with scissors. And we're like, what piece you want, Ed? And gave so me a made... piece of a turkey, a picture of a piece of a turkey, and put it on the plate. Oh, that seems Now, terrible. let me ask you, number one, nine, and Uncle Larry, do you believe anything that the Ed has just said since you've let him on the show? Well, the Ed never lies, Irv. He's an honest okay. fellow. And I, I got meatloaf all over the front of my Ed Super Deluxe T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, Irv, did you order an Ed Super Deluxe T-shirt? I wouldn't order a Super Deluxe T-shirt <laughs> if they were paying me to order the Super Deluxe T-shirt. Come on, Irv, you got to support the Ed. Like the Ed. And you know what? Hey, listen, ain't nobody going to order no Super Gay Internet Show shirt either. <laughs> so don't be trying to talk and act like me because I know every time I do something, all you want to do is I start collecting football people. Oh, Irv's got a whole bunch of football people. Irv's got a whole bunch of football people. Well, 
What in the world is this? Can Why I get a show? Out? Can I get a show? Irv, oh, Irv got a show. Oh, oh, oh. I got a car. Irv got a car. Oh, oh. Then Irv got, I got cable TV. Next thing I know, Irv got cable TV. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Everything I get, this guy got to get the same thing. I had a $5 bill in my pocket. Irv's like, look what I got. Pulls out a $5 bill. I said, come on, man. Why do you yeah. got to copy me all the time? Don't be trying I to be no think- Santa Claus at the mall because I already got the job. Yeah, that's right. Oh, 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 no, you don't. Nobody would hire you to do anything, been, even pick up garbage. Well, I've been in Santa Tran for over a week and a half now. So, you know, and I know all the horses' names. I know all them oh, horse the, names. The reindeers, yeah, the reindeers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. He's kept a job matter. for a week and a half? That's yeah, got to be a Guinness Book of World's record record. <laughs> Listen, you can't man, even I've do a show for three consecutive weeks. My, my goodness. Man, I'm like ADT. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like ADT, man. I got it. <laughs> All right. What? That's what I'm yeah, I don't that know if that means either. Make so what were you guys nine, to compile? You know, let's put all the Number one nine, nine. Uh-huh. I think you should look up the ratings for the Edge show and put them up, up, up against the ratings for my show and see who has the best show. Now, you guys have a great show. You and Uncle Larry yeah, have listen, great listen. chemistry. All you suckers is riding my coattails. And then what happened is you guys sandwiched my show in between, so it messed me up on the things. Because by yeah, far, yeah. I get way more than this both you punks put together. <laughs> Herb, you right. got about, Herb, you got about three kids listening to your show, and ain't none of them your mama. Well, that's... Oh, I can get oh your mama so to bring mama's into this. <laughs> Yeah. I don't care. We can bring your mommy into it or not. I don't care what she's doing. But why don't I've you tell us to day, come house? I, I, I like when you guys were friends push, back in the old I days. I seen her mama pushing a shopping cart the other day. I said, what you doing? She said, are oh, we moving? Ah, I see. Uh, she's, she's moving. Okay. Yeah. So she said. It's terrible. You know, hey, the Ed, we I were just talking but, UFC when you showed up, and I know you love to talk UFC because the Ed hates UFC. Uh, the other day on the phone, he was bitching about Dana White to me for about three hours. Remember that, the Ed? Yeah, Dana White, he's going to go to jail, but I ain't worried about it. You're going to go to jail if you keep talking smack because you're you know going what? there because you're afraid of me. You're scared if I go to jail, I'm going there to visit your mama. If I go to jail, <laughs> right. I'm going there to visit your mama. She's been locked up for looking ugly. That's what she got locked up for. She got locked up for looking ugly. Yeah. Well, yeah, my mama... My mother will be here for, for Thanksgiving, Ed, so you can say no, all these she, things she to her out. face. She ain't getting out. They ain't letting her out. <laughs> they ain't letting her out. They go over to parole, man. It's illegal to marry your mother in 49 states. Where's the, where can yeah. you marry her mother, her, the Herb's mother? Wyoming. No, oh, Wyoming. I thought yeah. maybe Hawaii or Alaska, but no. Wyoming. That's where they got them beastality laws. <laughs> all right. And that's where the Ed would run away from me because he doesn't want to race me or fight me because he's scared. Listen, man, that's why you sleep on a twin mattress. I don't know what that means. Yeah, me neither. What? No matter, no matter if you do crossword puzzles three times, it don't matter. Yeah, all right. No, that makes sense. The Ed He's has telling... officially lost his mind. No, I got a hernia though. Hey, I'll tell you, I got a hernia no one night. Yeah, you, you told me that. Yeah. My guy named Ball said he, man, but I seen today because I had to go take a blood test again. Oh, because I, uh-huh. I stopped taking my I stopped taking my my blood clot medicine. I tell you that. Yes. They took me off of it, so I had to go today to go take a blood test. Now, I had to take this blood test because they want to make sure that I can stay off this medicine. And man, this dude sitting next to me at the doctor, man, I never seen nothing like it before. His stomach hung all the way, he was in a wheelchair. His stomach hung all the way down, and he was kicking it with his feet. And it looked like it was a big old ball sack. I'm telling you. His stomach, like, his, like, whole midsection was just like, man, it, I don't, man, I, I wish, I tried to ask the dude to take a picture with me, but he wouldn't. Yeah. Because I was just amazed. I mean, i never seen nothing like it before. It was like. Elephant man in his midsection. It was like. Well, that's a shame, Nita. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I thought to myself, there ain't no way this dude can ever get a woman. And I'm thinking, he can't even pay a hooker. Because what's she going to do with that? Nothing. What? <laughs> Not like nothing at all. I mean, it's like having, it's like having, like, mouthwash with no tartar protection. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? Pretty good. Hey, Herb. Ed has lost his mind in two conversations now. Yeah, hey, Herb. What do you Herb. want, Ed? Little E, little itty bitty D. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, I need 50 bucks, man. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Need, why uh, do you need 50 bucks? <laughs> Ask Uncle Larry. I ain't giving him any Herb. money. Herb, come over and race me for 50 bucks so I can take your money. Well, I'll I'll be to your house in in thirty minutes. Where do you live? Send me a tweet. Or a uh, Listen, listen. I want to videotape us racing. And then okay. when I do, the tape will be so fast that they'll see how slow you are. That's what I'm saying. Again, the end, you couldn't catch me in a phone booth. You couldn't find me with the Hubble telescope. Hey, hey, number one nine, call Pastor Reeves on three way for me. Yeah, <laughs> Why is that? Call him up. Well, I don't know. Now, that, now, number one nine, that guy you need to stay away from. He's a scam so, artist. Uh, Pastor yeah, Reeves is going to tell you a prayer because you ain't got no prayer on me. Yeah. You know, Pat, hey, listen to this, though. I'm going to tell you something. Pastor Reeves, he is out on bail. Well, not even on bail. He's done with his time. He's right. coming back to Las Vegas, Irv, and you're going to start going to his church. I'm telling you. Me and you going to go to it. Because he's supposed to, his new church is supposed to be opening on Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, wow. oh I'm definitely not going. No way. No, no. He got a Super Bowl party. He, he do his service. At about, like, you know, from 8.30 to 9, 30 minutes, he tells you about what you got to know. Then he has a Super Bowl seminar. If Super Bowl goes, seminar. Yeah. And then we'll have a whole big party up until Super Bowl time. And there will be, like, dancers and strippers, all kind of stuff. All, big old party at the church. Wait, hmm? dancers and strippers at a church with a Super Bowl seminar slash scam. The Ed, you know, scam. Okay, they, they now it's listen, every time. Listen, they have they sell the squares, man. You know how they put the numbers? They put the squares like so. You put your money in the in the collection plate if you want to buy a square. Yeah. Now you know what number one nine. Now this is a conspiracy, C O N conspiracy, and uh -huh. I think you need to do something about it. Well, what's the conspiracy that uh, the Ed is a crazy old man, or what? Aha! The Ed is a crazy old man. You nailed it right on the head. I wish I'd have known. I wish I, I wish I'd have known you was having C Williams on your show the other day. I would have called in and told him, uh, told him some stuff. Well, C actually does say hi. I, I did tell him that, that I talked to you, little E, little itty bitty D, and he yeah. says hello. He's and you know what? You're with, right, number one nine. We, you, you, I don't like you better. I liked you better when we, when the Ed and I were friends. I really did. I don't know what's wrong. Friend. Irv, you're my friend. You just, you just ain't cool like me. See, I'm like, I'm like the cool kid in school. Well, all the girls is on me, and I got on my Letterman's jacket with a big E and a little bitty B on it. So I'm you're like the fawn, and Irv's like Potsy. Is that kind of what's going on here? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like Potsy. Right. He's like Potsy Weber. I mean, yeah. I'm like the cool kid. I walk around like, hey, I get my thumbs up. Hey. In your office, in the bathroom, probably. Hey. Right. Everybody say, hey, we want some food. Everybody say, hey. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Well, Irv, is there anything else uh, you'd like to tell the kids before we uh, I got to ask I, I got to talk to uh, the Ed about some other stuff. But, uh. Well, Irv, no, I, I, Irv, Irv, one I, more thing, man. Yeah. Does he still hang out with JJ? No. No, Where he doesn't. I'm not sure. 
I ain't seen him in a while, man. No, so your buddy Zeke knows too. Jimmy J.J. Walker? Man, him and Jimmy Walker used to hang out. Oh. I well, number one, time one nine, you... I'll let you talk to the Ed, and then I'll talk to Uncle Larry on Friday on, on the Super Great Internet Show. And I want you all to have a, a, a good night, and thank you for letting me on the LCS Hockey Show. Well, thanks for calling. All right, Irv. Appreciate it, buddy. Hey, Irv, one more thing. If you yeah. really want to be like the Ed, uh, you need to create a Tumblr page and then not update it. If You, you know, <laughs> it's just one more thing if you want to be like the Ed. Yeah. You're, you're right. You are so yeah. right. See, that's yeah. why you are the host <laughs> of the Super Great Internet Show, Uncle Larry. Thank you, Irv. All right, Irv, we'll talk to you Friday, buddy. Thank you so much. SGI yeah, News is out of here. <laughs> thanks, Irv. He's a really nice guy, that Irv. Yeah. yeah. Good people. Now, now, the Ed, are you still with us? Yeah, what are you talking to me about? Well, I, I think we should bring the Ed into my little conspiracy discussion tonight, Larry. What do you think? All right. Well, hold on a minute, because uh, I was asked to say, uh, for, this is also from Major Minority, who's pretty much just, uh, you know, he's taking over my spot. I'm just speaking for him. But uh, he said, if the Ed calls tonight, ask him about his vasectomy. He told me that he doesn't want any more kids, and from now on, when the girls swallow, they'll be drinking Ed Light. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting a mastectomy. <laughs> oh, so I get it. So I'm, yeah, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And when I go in to get my hernia took off, uh-huh. I told him I said I'm gonna get a mastectomy too, because I ain't having no more babies. Yeah, that's a good idea. You should. And have then done major minority, because major minority had texted me the other day, and we was talking about it on the text. And uh, then I told him. I said, yeah, when I get that done, because he called it a jizzectomy or something. But I said, I said, yeah, because then when the girls, they, they do what they got to do, there won't be no more babies in there. They'll be swallowing Ed Light. <laughs> I, like Diet Ed. Diet Ed. Have, it, won't, it won't have, it won't have the, uh, what's that called, the gluten. <laughs> Wheat free, gluten free? I don't know. <laughs> Winkdell loves that stuff. <laughs> no, I'm strictly non gluten. All right, well, we'll, we'll be the... uh-huh. What's this? How come Major Minority don't have a show no more? What happened to him? He's a pussy. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like... I got a. I gotta work. I gotta go to school. All of a sudden, like he's all trying to be educated and stuff. The dude sells gumballs on the street in New York City. How hard can that be? He runs a gumball machine. I don't know. Apparently, it's tough. Apparently, it is tough. Hey, somebody thought that his head was a gumball machine one time, and they kept trying to put quarters in the slit of his eyes. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, that is horrible. Yeah. Dude, how about this? Real quick, uh, let me. Uh, Ed, I, I heard you on the. Uh, you called the Craig Dodge show the other day. I heard that. And uh, how about this, Mike Dell? You know, the, they're on the air for. The Ed's on the air for like, I don't know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you know, just bringing up his random, you know, topics and talking about uniforms and all that sort of thing. And Dodge is, you know, Dodge is being nice, and but, you know, he's trying to move on. He's got to hang up or whatever. So right at the end of the show, he's like, all right, Ed, well, you know, it's been good talking to you. And the, and the Ed says, yeah, it's about time I flush anyways. I've been on the crap for the whole time. <laughs> it's just awesome. Yeah. That's great. I loved it. <laughs> That's great, is it? Yeah. Yeah. I thought well, it was I, I pooped I for 45 it. minutes that day. Yeah. Don't, don't your legs go to sleep, though, when you're on the crap for that long? No, I did one. Oh, yeah, you got the hernia. You're pushing. Do you guys think that this Bradley Cooper is the sexiest man alive? People Magazine yeah. named him sexiest man alive. Yeah, I could see it. I guess. <laughs> You're a fag. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh, Larry Sandusky. He's at it again. <laughs> what a schmuck. Little Jay, little Jay's deeping in on my other line, but I ain't gonna talk to him though. You guys more important. Yeah. Little Jay will just call me, and want me to sing a song. He always calls me all the time. Ed, sing a song. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man! How many times have you heard white? Why, 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 
white women? Is that what you said? I'm dreaming of I'm a, a white woman. White girl. Yeah. I'm dreaming of a white All right, yeah, let's save it for the Christmas album, Ed. We, we got business to do, all right? And I got, I got four new Christmas songs that will be coming out on CD. Mm. Five ninety nine. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be a big seller. Now. Hey, yeah. You know what is a big seller is the Ed Super Deluxe T-shirts at Bat Page Press. These Bat Page shirts Press. Are going. Right. These shirts are going like hotcakes. Yeah, go over to uh, backpagepress.com and order your own, the Ed Super Deluxe T-shirt. It's a beautiful shirt. I'm wearing mine right now, actually. No joke. Me too. I got a blue one. What color is yours? (laughs) Yeah, I got a blue one, too. They're all blue, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. I thought I was getting a red one tomorrow. (laughs) No. A blue one. It's a handsome shade of blue. Yeah, but I got a meatloaf stain on it. Jesus Christ. What do they call this blue, uh, Larry? Heather blue? Is that right? Heather blue. Blue. Mine's like mine's like an old old faded out blue man, like somebody wore it all right. He gave me a used shirt. <laughs> no, oh, he didn't give you a used shirt. Supposed to look like that, do you? No, <laughs> yeah. He gave me a shirt. The end is crooked, and then it's got a meatloaf stain on it. I'm like, come yeah. on, dude. You can't and he said it with a meatloaf stain. That is unforgivable. <laughs> I don't know what's cool. What, what's Corey doing there? But, uh, hey, hey uh, Larry, speaking of the Backpage Press, I'm trying to get uh, our buddy Sean Leahy and uh, Greg Wyshynski to make Yahoo Puck Daddy t-shirts. Through Backpage Press, you know? that would be sweet. Oh, it would be great. And uh, I'm trying to maybe uh, I'm trying to think of ideas what the logo could be. You know, maybe a Star Wars theme like Wachinski could be like Skywalker there with the lightsaber, except instead of the lightsaber, it could be a hockey stick like up. And then like Leahy could be like uh, Leia wrapped around his leg at the bottom. You know, with bright well, red Sean hair, Leahy will be Sean Leahy should be Princess Leahy. Princess, Princess Leahy. Leahy, yeah. Oh, huh. Princess Leahy. All right, I see. Yeah. He's fat anyway. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, uh, 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 Larry, you ready? Uh, should we? Uh, should this be an official? I don't know if this is an official conspiracy segment. What's it about? Because it's just something I, I threw together in like ten minutes, and uh, it, it came from a conversation we had on your show, The Ed, uh, uh, like a week or so ago, when uh, you brought up your Magic Johnson conspiracy theory. You know? Oh yeah. And yeah. I was like, well, maybe we should do a show of uh, sports conspiracies some night. And Larry and I didn't have any idea what to do tonight, so I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll put together a little list of sports conspiracies. And in the end, you might be able to comment on some of these. What do you think? Yeah, Magic didn't have nothing. Yeah, that's the Ed's uh, conspiracy. <laughs> uh, the Ed, you know Magic Johnson's on the Twitters. You can contact him and you know run up by him. Say, hey, uh, you don't have HIV. See what he says. I mean, how many followers he got? Uh, I think he's got a couple of, like million or eight or a couple hundred thousand. Man, when those guys got that many millions of followers, they don't be reading with people, right? Yeah, yeah, I should hope not. They be reading forever. All right, now I didn't really number these at all because I just threw a bunch together. So we'll just talk. Uh, we'll just talk about random conspiracy theories. Uh, so you already mentioned uh, your Magic Johnson one that you contend he doesn't have the HIV. And now, uh, what about another basketball one? The Ed. No, the, the NBA. It, it's tough to call NBA officiating a conspiracy because it's just awful anyway. And uh, but. A lot of people point to uh, 2002 Western Conference Finals, Game 6. Do you remember that? They had uh, Lakers and Sacramento. The Lakers and Kings, yeah. Lakers and Kings, yeah. yeah. Now, the conspiracy yeah, is the that Kings, the NBA wanted the Lakers to win. So, oh, yeah, uh, David the, Kings Stern, had that series, the Kings had that series. Wasn't the Kings up like 3-2 or something like that? Yeah, they could have closed it out there. And uh, uh, the rumor is that David Stern told the ref to make sure the Lakers win. And they called 27 fouls against the Kings in the fourth quarter of that game. Yeah. Uh, or, or at least yeah, the 27 free throws that were taken in the fourth yeah, quarter. They shot like, oh, yeah, a whole bunch. Yeah, because, listen, the NBA is so crooked, and no one's even missing it right now. David Stern, he's going to not – I'm telling you, they're gonna, they should just remake the whole NBA. Yeah, it's uh, – yeah, I don't think anyone is missing the NBA right now. It's kind of no, – yeah, everyone no, loves the not. NFL. Listen, the NBA, the only fans the NBA have is poor black people, and they ain't got money. Because they're, they're poor, like you just said. Yeah, But uh, the other thing about this uh, Western Conference Finals, there are so many, or yeah, the Western Conference Finals, Tim Donaghy, the old crooked ref who, you know, got busted for fixing games or whatever, he, he says that this is one of the games he thinks the referees fixed, that he knows that these yeah. guys were fixing it. And those guys are all in a little good old boy network. Now, David Stern needs to be out as commissioner. They need to revamp the whole goddamn league, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It's craziness. They gotta have a hard salary cap. I mean, I don't. I don't particularly like the NBA. 
But I mean, they just gotta they gotta revamp it. You can't have the inmates running asylum. So do you think they're going to miss the whole season yet? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Uh, how about another one from the NBA? The Ed. Uh, the 1985 draft. Everyone always points to that, saying that David Stern oh, rigged it. Oh, Patrick Ewing. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the cold, the cold, the cold uh, envelope. Yeah, there's, there's two theories. Larry, are you aware of this? The cold envelope. No. Are you aware? Yeah. No. Uh, it was the first time they did a draft lottery, and Patrick Ewing was the big prize, and David Stern wanted uh, to put a superstar in New York to make the Knicks relevant again. So they think that David Stern rigged it. Like they, they had it set up in like uh, five envelopes, big envelopes, big square envelopes, in a big pl- uh, plastic globe kind of contraption where they spun them around in it. And the one conspiracy theory is that the envelope with the Knicks uh, logo inside was frozen, so that Stern could feel it when he reached in that you know, hey, that envelope's cold. That's the Knicks. I'll pull it out. And then another theory uh, goes that uh, the guy putting the envelopes in the big plastic globe bang the Knicks one against the side of it to bend the corner of the envelope. So when Stern reached in, he looked for the envelope with a bent corner, and he picked that out. And uh, there, there's videos of it on the YouTubes, and you can see that the, the envelope he picks out does have a bent corner. And he does kind of reach in and twist the envelopes around a little till he can see maybe the corner and then lifts it up. But, you know, who knows? What do you think, the oh. I mean, I, I I do definitely believe it was rigged for that that purpose to get Patrick Ewing in New York. I kind of believe the cold one more, but it just depends on I mean, if it was frozen. I mean, I don't know. It could the the coldness could get on other envelopes if it was touching them. Well, the, I I actually I from watching the video on the YouTube, I would believe the cor- the bent corner one more than the 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 frozen or the chilled envelope one because when he reaches in. Uh, he doesn't touch all the envelopes. Like uh, the envelope to the far left of his hand could have been the one, and he doesn't even like go over there. So um, I don't know. Watch it yourself on the YouTube. See what you think. But uh, I don't know. It's pro. It, it looked kind of legit. I think it's just a coincidence that the thing was bent. But uh, who knows? I don't know. They always seem in the NBA to get places, people to where they want them to go, like the bum yeah. games in Cleveland. I want to put anything past Stern. He's a weasel. You know that guy. But uh, yeah. Uh, and then the other, another big NBA one uh, that you mentioned uh, last week on your show, the had uh, Michael Jordan and the gambling, that when he retired in uh, 94, oh, yeah. that it wasn't yeah. because he wanted to retire, it's because the NBA was going to investigate his gambling, and uh, it, maybe he was betting against NBA games, who knows. So he stepped aside, then the NBA, as soon as he retired, the NBA stopped their investigation, and David Stern said they weren't going to look into it anymore or whatever, and, and mm-hmm. he stayed away for... Almost two seasons. Well, to me, well, I, I'll take it a step further. Is that the people who, who Jordan owed money, they told Stern, this dude owes us too much money. You're going to have to make this dude stop playing or we're going to expose your league for the bull crap that it is. And mm-hmm. then Jordan quit playing ball, figured his debt was paid off because he quit playing ball, and then fool said, uh-uh, we're going to kill your daddy, man. Oh, so you're tying it into his dad's death as well. Oh man, his dad didn't. His dad died at the hand of them mob people, man. Yeah, we'll have to look into that. Remember all that, Larry? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 His old man was in a car on the side of the road, right? And uh, the guys come up and shot him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, how, how lucky could those guys be to shoot Michael Jordan's dad? They wasn't. They didn't do it. And they wasn't. How, yeah, oh, you think the same man. thing went on with Bill Cosby and his kid? Bill Cosby wasn't gambling. I know, but well, we don't know that. Why did Bill Cosby's kid get killed on the side of the road? Bill Cosby's kid was in the drugs. All right. All right. Hey, Ed, what about, uh, do you remember Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King? 1974? Oh, yeah, the, the Bobby Riggs, when he was an old man, and he yeah. tried to play Billie Jean King in, in tennis. Yeah, Bobby Riggs at the time. Now, Riggs, people uh, don't, they think of him as a gambler and a hustler and whatnot. But when he was young, he was the number one ranked men's tennis player in the world, like 1939, 40, and 41. Oh, yeah. But by 73, he was a 55-year-old guy there, not yeah, in Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, but that's like saying, let's have, uh, who's an old man right now? Let's have Dr. J right now play against uh, Lisa Leslie. Well, you know what? Hey, Dr. J might not beat Lisa Leslie now. <laughs> <laughs> 
1973, uh, first Riggs challenged uh, a lady named Margaret Court, who was the number one player that year for the women. She was 30 years old, and he beat her 6-2, 6-1 rather easily. <laughs> no one talks about that, <laughs> you know, that uh, a 55-year-old man beat the number one female tennis player in the world. But then uh, Billie Jean King, who was also a dominant player at the time, uh, she had won 10 majors already at this point, and she was, uh, I think, 29. Uh, then they played, and it was like a big thing called bat- Trumped Up as the Battle of the Sexes and everything. The winner got a hundred grand, and uh, Billie Jean King beat him 6-4, 6-3, 6-3. I mean, a 55-year-old man, and she still didn't exactly crush him. Uh, yeah, she struggled some, against him. That's like, some people, when I, when I, that's uh, like right now, they want me to, to race Marion Jones. Well, I'll still get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, she's yeah, off the juice hard. now, so I don't know if you know she could even yeah. run too fast. But the, uh, the Bobby Riggs, he was famous for uh, you know being a gambler and a con man and whatnot. And he, he once bet someone he could beat him with a frying pan instead of a racket. He did all kind of zany stuff like that. So the conspiracy is that he got this big, uh, you know, celebrity cause here, a lot of money raised, and then he and his pals all bet against him, and then he threw the match, and then he collected it. Yeah, he might have, he might have, he might have collected all kinds of money for it. Who yeah, knows? but uh, that's the theory, but uh, there's a little, uh, people say that Riggs, was actually kind of humiliated and depressed in the months after that he lost. So I don't know. But uh, Didn't he shoot one himself? thing passed to Bobby Riggs. Hey, yeah, do you remember when Bobby Riggs and uh, Billie Jean King then? Only it was only like a month after this happened. They went on the Odd Couple. They were on an episode of the Odd Couple when they were playing ping pong. You remember that? I don't remember that episode. That yeah, was a good one. Yeah. Check that one out. Hey, uh, the, let me ask you if you got this conspiracy theory in your list. Uh huh. The Cal Ripken streak in the election. That's company. right, yet I have it right here. Do you want to tell the people? Oh, about okay. It? Oh, you tell them. I just want to know if you had it. Well, in August 1997, because Larry, you didn't know about this one. I told you earlier. Uh, yeah. Because Larry loves the Cal Ripken, right? Uh, no, but I love the other side of this. Of this. Um, so, Kevin Costner was apparently good pals with uh, yeah Ripken and his wife, and Costner was staying at the Ripken home in August of 97, and the story goes that Cal forgot something. He had to come home unexpectedly, and he found uh, Costner banging his wife. Yeah. And he beat up Kevin Costner. Or yep. there's a big so, Then he yeah. called Peter Angelos up and says, hey, man, I ain't playing tonight, man. I got stuff to do. I got some yeah. stuff going on. And Angelos like, oh, I'm in the streets. He goes, man, forget the streets. I don't care nothing about it, man. So Peter Angelos, somehow he calls the people who run the electric company, and in that side of town, power outage for no reason on a sunny day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, awesome, man. it's like August 8th or something like that. I can't remember what day exactly it was. What day yes, was they had to cancel the game, right? Right, the edge? Yeah. So the streak was able yeah, to they cancel the game and everything. Because <laughs> Kyle Ripken wasn't coming to the game. Yeah, what about that, Larry? What do you think of that? I would be more embarrassed of getting beat up by Kyle Ripken. <laughs> Um, and Kevin oh, yeah. Costner is just an actor, man. He ain't really, he really wasn't in Field of Dreams. He wasn't no baseball player. Tin really. <laughs> Tin Cup. He's but uh, Tin Ripken Cop. denies it, like because he's he's even been asked. Well, you know, he's, of course he's going to deny it. But he's been and asked about it on radio shows and stuff, and, and he me, says it's not I'm true. Uh huh. I got a conspiracy theory that you don't know about yet. All right, but let me just say that Ripken contends oh. that he was there. Uh, in uniform and on the field taking warm-ups when the game was canceled. Like, he was there, and other people backed that up. So, yeah, it just seems like it's a rumor. But uh, All right. Well, I'll tell you a mind-blowing conspiracy. All right. It's about the Tiger Woods. Oh, okay. The Tiger Woods. You don't got this one on your list, do you? No, I don't have anything about Tiger Woods here. Yeah. Okay. That Tiger Woods is not really as bad as he's playing. Okay. Now, the reason is, there is a porno tape of Tiger Woods. Okay. With men and women frolicking around yeah. with him. <laughs> yeah, I've heard this part before. Now, listen but Yeah, there's a, there's a sex tape of him banging yeah. dudes, right? Or dudes that banging him. They, that they've told him he wants, they want $25 million from him. Uh-huh. He ain't budging on it. So now he has to throw these games, and he's not playing well because if he does start playing well again, they said they'll show the tape. 
<laughs> well, I'm trying to humiliate the fool. All right. Oh, so how, so. You, how can you just go to stop, start playing that bad? That's like Michael Jordan coming out and just like, you know, oh, just because he cheated on Juanita, which everybody knows he did, yeah. that he comes out and next time he averages four points a game. And he well, there's also for some uh, reason. could be another Tiger Woods conspiracy that's not on the list, but uh, that when he had the knee injury so, and he took that year off or whatever, that really that was to, because he's on steroids and he was getting off the steroids. And he oh, yeah, he's been on steroids. He's been taking steroids oh, yeah. and had some drugs forever. Because, yeah, all of them guys, man. LeBron James, look at his head. You know he's doing them. Yeah, it, 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 it kind of drives me nuts when people say, oh, Woods isn't on No, I, I just look at his body change. and uh, He's been linked to a dude, that, a doctor that gave HGH out to a bunch of people, right? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and like Manny Pacquiao, look at the size of his head two times bigger <laughs> yeah. than it was. So, yeah, there's some uh, Tiger Woods ones. And uh, let's see, what uh, what else we got? Oh, we got some, a couple Gretzky ones. You know your buddy Ice. Gretzky. Yeah. The, the first one, of, of course, is the Gretzky trade back in 88. A lot of people think the NHL uh, steered Gretzky to L.A. Uh, because when the rumors first surfaced, Gretzky uh, was rumored to go to maybe Detroit, New York, or Vancouver. Yeah. He, oh, yeah, they, NHL did that, man. The dude in charge of NHL at that time, they won yeah, the – because they thought L.A. was going to be a big hockey bid. Yeah, so they wanted him to go to L.A. to, you know, create the foundation for non-traditional markets, and uh, which worked, and it helped. But I, I don't know. It seems like Bruce McNall, the Kings owner, really wanted Gretzky, and he was really aggressive. Uh, so I, I don't no, know. Bruce the McNall NHL was in with, it, with the owner, with the owner. That was Bruce McNall when he, because how, he didn't know the Kings that long before he got Wayne Gretzky, right? Yeah, that's, I think he did just take over the team. Uh, yeah, because that. that was part of his deal to buy this team and to get it out of the you know financial ruin. Now, the deal for uh, Gretzky, I don't know if you remember, Larry, Marty McSorley and Mike Krishlaniski went with Gretzky to Los Angeles for Jimmy Carson, Martin Jelena, three first-round picks, and $15 million cash. The uh, the Oilers wanted Luke Robitaille, and the Kings said no, so they put Jimmy Carson in the deal instead. You know. Yeah, Johnny Carson. Yeah, Jimmy Carson. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, so I don't know. I just don't know if the NHL is that bright to steer Gretzky to LA. I don't know. Um, now, the other one about Gretzky is uh, 2006, Operation Slapshot. Remember that, Larry? Operation Slapshot. Oh, is that, the, is that the betting stuff? Yeah, the gambling ring with Rick Tockett. Uh, Gretzky yeah. was the coach of the Phoenix Coyotes at the time. Tockett was his assistant coach. And uh, Tockett got busted for helping to run a nation, uh, nationwide uh, gambling ring. And the feds yeah. busted it up, called, and it was called Operation Slapshot. And when um, Gretzky was gambling on hockey. <laughs> yeah, that's the, and, that's the and, and do you know why they know that? Do you know why they know that? Why is that? Because he was the only one who ever has bet on hockey. <laughs> <laughs> but but implicated in the thing was uh, in the whole operation slap shot was Tockett, Gretzky's assistant coach, uh, Michael Barnett, who was the Phoenix Coyotes GM and Gretzky's former agent, and Gretzky's wife, the lovely Janet Jones. And the, the conspiracy is that Janet Jones took the fall. Just so uh, Gretzky could get off scot free, she who's covered it up looking, for us. Who's better looking, Janet Jones or Jenny Jones? Who's the uh, last one? Say Jenny Jones? You don't remember Jenny Jones? The, the talk yeah, I remember Jenny Jones. Why would you even? Yeah, Janet Jones is much better looking. Whatever happened to Jenny Jones? After yeah. she got like ninety-two different sizes of breast implants, and then she fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, I don't. I don't well, know. We we'll have to look into that. Yeah. Wasn't that her that had the uh, somebody got murdered off of her show? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar, yeah. You know, I'm not surprised more people don't get killed off them shows. Yeah. Yeah. Next lady who tries to put me on Murray, I'm whacking her. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got a, we only got a couple left here. Uh, well, of course, Spygate with the NFL. Now, the conspiracy there is that Roger Goodell destroyed all the evidence. So he mm. could uh, prevent it from becoming a bigger story, and uh, the full scope of the story w- would always stay hidden. What do you think of that, Ed? Yeah, I know. I know the Patriots was cheating. Yeah, no one doubts that they're cheating, but I, I guess the extent of it is what uh, people are still like. How much they benefited from it, and we'll never know well, because that, Goodell no, destroyed I the evidence. I told you that. Remember, remember, I think I told you this. I think I remember. I told you when I investigated this that in the first half of games during those couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. The Patriots' average starting field position was like their own 26-yard line, 27-yard line, okay? 
they're in the second half of games when they got to see the videos and do all that, their average starting position was the 49-yard line. So their defense That's greatly improved in the second half. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. And the Patriots, the Patriots turnovers that year were almost a two-to-one margin more in the second half than the first half. Well, oh, look at the Ed doing research. Now, can we yeah. trust you on this research? That's legit. Yeah, I, talk, I thought we talked about this a long time ago. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I can't remember. Hey, yeah, here's another have... football one, though. Uh, th- this is when you were a little kid. Uh, well, not a little kid, but, you know, younger. Uh, Super Bowl three, the Ed, 1969. Uh, Colts favored by 18, yet the Jets won 16-7. And Bubba Smith always alleged that the game was fixed. <laughs> Bubba Smith, the old Colts defensive lineman and star of Police Academy, uh, said it I was never fixed. heard him say it. I never heard Bubba Smith say that. Yeah, he alleged that it was fixed. And uh, I guess the, I don't know how they could uh, – if you're saying it was fixed, then you got to – Don Shula had to be involved in Earl uh, Morrill, the, the quarterback had to be involved, and uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm buying I, it. I'll tell you, the only game I know being fixed was UNLV against Duke in the Final Four. Yeah, I read that a lot when I was looking this up. The UNLV lost 79-77, is that right? And, uh, yeah. Now that yeah. game was fixed. Them players knew they was going to lose that game. Yeah, because then they had the picture of them in the hot tub with uh, Jimmy the Fixer or something, right? Yeah, the fi- Richard the Fixer Perry. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. all right. Yeah, now uh, one last one here. Uh, the boxing. Yeah, I know you love the boxing. Can you guess which one I'm going to bring up? Your your boxing knowledge. What well, boxing? Oh, Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. That's right, Muhammad Ali and the Phantom Punch. Now, the first yeah. time uh, he fought Sonny Liston, that was February 1964, and he was a 22-year-old back then, and he, he was Cassius Clay still, and he beat Sonny Liston, the 32-year-old champ. And if you and if you know the story about that fight, yet, of course you do, but in the in the fifth four, end of the fourth round, uh, Ali was complaining he couldn't see. He came back, yeah. and uh, he wanted to quit the fight and cut off his gloves, and Angelo Dundee said, no, 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 this is it. This is this is the big time, kid. you got to get out there and fight. Just run this round, you know? And so he went out there, and he stayed away from Liston for one round, and his eyesight came back, and he eventually kept took control of the fight again, and Liston quit on his stool after the sixth round, saying he had a shoulder injury, but his own corner said that was pretty much bogus, that he just quit on the stool. And, uh, but the, the, the conspiracy there, or at least uh, the, the shady business there, was that Liston's corner put something on his gloves to burn yeah. Ali's eyes. What do you think yeah, of that? to burn Ali's well, that's the same thing. That, that's, why, that's why a lot of American fighters don't go over to Germany to fight anymore. That's why Roy Jones would never go over to, to Germany and fight this fellow named Darius Mikoshevsky. Yeah. Because over there and overseas, man, when Americans always go overseas, something always happens. Because, man, they poison your food. They, they paint your water in your, in your little thing. You know, they'll, they'll you know, like say, say they'll, you know, they'll get a hold of your stuff and, and they'll mess you all up. Mm-hmm. I'll mess it all up. It'll be all messed up. Yeah, it'll mess you all up. Now, the uh, rematch took place in May of 65, and it was a first-round knockout. In, was that in Lewiston, Maine, or was the first one in Lewiston, Maine? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I think it was the second one. With the Phantom Punch with the first round, and then Ali. Yeah, that's the, and, uh, that's the famous picture of Ali standing over Liston, and he was telling him, get up, sucker, or get up and fight, mm-hmm. sucker. Because Ali didn't even realize he had hit Liston, uh, like to, hard enough to knock him out, and uh, a lot of people thought it was it was all fake that Liston took a dive because he owed money to the mob. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, so what, know, what do you think of that, Theod? I mean, I I could believe it was probably true, and then Nation of Islam people was probably dealing with them mob people. They was all making deals and stuff, you know, and they were like, "Hey, man, Sonny Liston got to go." Yeah, because uh, Liston, there are also rumors that the Nation of Islam was uh, threatening him if he beat Ali. Yeah. And, but if you look uh, you know, if you look in the slow motion replay, Ali does hit him with like a chopping right hand. Yeah, he does it, hit him, but I mean, not, yeah. not like that. And then suddenly, Liston, he ends up killing himself like a few years later. Yeah, now do you, do you really think he killed himself or was he murdered? Well, he may have killed himself just because he owed too many people money, but then somebody could have wiped him out, man. Yeah, I'll have to do a full segment on that. I mean, this is very uh, yeah, in Las Vegas. He died. He died in Las Vegas. He 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 dead in Las Vegas, man. No, what wasn't it like a drug overdose or something or? 
Uh, I'm not sure well, how they did it. And, they, and if it was a drug overdose, I, I could believe that he did it, or they could have just drugged him. They could have just put the needle in his arm. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. But uh, I remember hearing tell that uh, maybe he didn't kill himself, but because uh, again he was tied into some shady folks. Oh, one more that I forgot: the uh, Bobby Thompson home run of 1951. Now this has pretty much been proven that uh, the Giants were stealing signs. Oh, now this yeah, was even yeah, before that. you, you the Ed. You weren't even born in 51. Yeah. But um, I was born in 53. Yeah, the Giants caught the Dodgers for the NL pennant after trailing by 13 and a half games in August. Uh, and so they had to do a three-game playoff, and Bobby Thompson, of course, hit the home run, uh, the shot heard around the world. Giants win the pennant, John, you know, all that stuff. And uh, he mm-hmm. hit it off Ralph, Ralph, uh, Ralph Bronca. And uh, the Wall Street Journal's Joshua Prager uh, basically proved that the Giants were stealing signs from the center field clubhouse and signaling hitters whether the pitch was a fastball or off-speed pitch. Uh, throughout August and September, so they could make up all that ground. But Thompson swears that he did not get a signal on the on that pitch where he hit the home run. I think that's one of the most overrated plays ever. That and Kurt Gibson's home run. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> that Kurt Gibson one's stupid. <laughs> Why is that one stupid, Ed? Oh, the dude hit a home run, okay. I mean, oh, and they had to make a big deal about him. Okay, he already hit the home run. It don't matter how slow he rounded the bases. But he hit it off Eckersley. That's the thing. Eckersley was, like, untouchable that year, you know? Eckersley was going to throw a fastball to a fastball hitter. <laughs> yeah, but what was Eckersley, ER, what was his ERA that year, like 1.2 or something? It was ridiculous. And, and how many times, and, and you know what? The year before, Kurt Gibson had hit four home runs off Eckersley when he played for Detroit. Is that he true? didn't play the whole game. He was hurt. I said before the year when he played for Detroit, he was owning Eckersley. No one never tells you that. Played oh, in the okay. American League for years. Look at the Ed busting out the obscure stats. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. The point is, you guys, yeah. don't listen to the things that I tell you, man. It's like when you, it's like you guys talking about you went to Syracuse, but you really went to Minnesota. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Yeah. Nobody would ever go to Minnesota. You go see 4th and 26. I sent him a shirt today. That dude's a fag. <laughs> and who's not a fag? Everybody's a fag to you, the Eddie. He's not a fag. He's a good kid. Street Jammer ain't no fag. <laughs> all right, well, yeah, all right, all right. Sometimes, you, sometimes you want to disown your own son, and sometimes you, you love him. I don't I don't get that at all. I've heard you on the Ed hey, Show many street, times bash Street, street Dreamer, Dreamer for no text me today. Street Dreamer texted me today talking about he left his girlfriend and got him a new woman now. Oh, well, that's really? yeah, yeah, he got a new woman, man. He left that one girl that was he was with for a long time. But, he like said father, he left like her in a father. cloud. Of, he said he put got in his race car and left her in a cloud of dust. Right. Yeah. That's what he told me. I think that's what. Any he other uh, sporting conspiracies you wanted to mention, Ed? Well, yeah. Well, go ahead. I remember one time when I was playing. Well, I don't think, yeah. you know, your personal conspiracies really. But all right, go ahead. I was Just on first speed. base. No, I was on first base, and I took a two-step lead. We were down by one run. There was a kid up the bat. And, uh, no, the score was tied. It was, we weren't down by no run. We were tied. That's how I scored a winning run. But I'm at first base. The guy pitches over. I get back. Jersey's all dirty. I get back. I take three steps off. I run the second. I slide head first. Oh, I'm safe by like five seconds. So I'm on second base. Hello? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Is that a conspiracy that we had? Well, listen, got you hung up. Small base. So then I'm on second base. Uh huh. The pitcher throws to second base. He's got me in a pickle between second and third. Man, the th- he throws it to the third baseman. I jump over the third baseman. And I grab the bag. They call me out. Okay. But 
A fan in the stands has a video camera. <laughs> all right. I think you're making this up as you go along, but all right, go ahead. His last name's Zapruder. <laughs> no, I don't know his name. Yeah. He goes, no, no, I think this guy was safe. So the, my coach threw out the challenge flag. So, well, I don't, I don't. Well, wait a minute. I don't think baseball teams had challenge flags ever. This is 1977. Oh, so they did have challenge flags in 1977. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm like, yeah. So you were so, 24. What what league were you playing in at 24 years old? When I played on the Houston Afros. <laughs> the Houston oh, Afros. Afros. They're very good. Then they reviewed the tape. Umpire comes out after further review, and it's safe. Yeah. So the next Again, time... Again, not really a conspiracy. Um, well, you know, I'm not finished. Okay. The next time the pitch comes, the guy hits a single, I score, we win the game. After the game, we get our trophies. We were the Houston Afros. When they handed us our trophies, they said Detroit Ditch Diggers on them. <laughs> the Detroit what? Who was playing? Ditch Diggers. Oh, the Detroit Ditch Diggers. So That's you were the saying that they had playing. it rigged up beforehand that the Detroit team was going to win. Yes. But because exactly. that guy in the stands had a video camera in 1977, they were able yes, to throw the challenge flag, yeah, reverse the call, and then you won the game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So to this day, my trophy says Detroit Big Diggers, but I never played for them. Yeah, that's, that's quite the tale. Yeah. And what league is this? I'm saying, baseball league. Oh, the <laughs> baseball, baseball league. TBL. Yeah. The TBL. The TBL, man, the baseball league. Okay. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, that was a thrilling uh, yarn you had. It's fun there. Um, anything else you'd like to tell the kids, or maybe we should just let you go? Because uh, I got nothing. Uh, did you did you book that guy on my show yet? Oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah, the Ed wants me to book uh, some crazy boxer guy who Floyd Mayweather Senior beat up a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. How are you gonna do that? I have no idea. Right. I'm gonna call Chelsea Hamlin in a minute. What happened to Ryan Stewart? I thought you were supposed to get him on the show. I've been waiting. Yeah, one live stew. Yeah, when oh, you yeah, get one live stew. The other day, and I forgot to tell He was supposed to come on last week, and I forgot to call him. <laughs> you were supposed to be on the week before and the week before. No, he actually was in Las Vegas for the fight, and he had called me a couple of times, and I talked to him. And I said, yeah, I'm going to call you and give you the number, man. He goes, yeah, let me know. And I forgot to let him know. Well, why don't you set it up for tomorrow? I don't know if he can do it when he's on the East Coast. That's why he wanted to do it when he was on the West Coast. So I don't know. He might not do it. Maybe he will. I'll call him. I'll call him to figure it out. Yeah, yeah figure it out. Man, I'm so tired, man. My balls hurt. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, All if your right. balls hurt, you're bed. tired. Yeah, you better go to bed. Why don't home. you update your, uh, update your Tumblr page for a change? How about that? Try that one time. And the Santa train has been rough on me. Yeah. I got are you, are you doing your show tomorrow? Yeah, I got one more day of Santa train. Oh, hey, man, the Jets are going to beat the Broncos 37 to 3. 37 to 3, Jets over Broncos. That's what you're calling. Bet all your money on the Jets, man. Because Tebow, he ain't never played against no good defense. It's over. I'll say there's no offensive touchdown in that game. For either team, Larry? No. That would be 101 odds at the sports book. Yeah, I'm going to say no offensive touchdown in, in the Jets versus Broncos game. Uh, oh, I say the Broncos right. score. I say Tebow gets in the end zone. I think I, I'm going to take this up. I'm going to take it a step further. Tebow is going to get Tebowed. <laughs> it's going to be done for the season. Yeah, do you still Tebow every morning when you wake up? Yeah. Twice <laughs> a day. 
<laughs> well, that's good. All right, the Ed. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate the call. The guy that owns Tybo is suing Tebow. <laughs> well, I don't think that's true at all. Yeah. <laughs> Billy Blanks is upset. Yeah, Billy Blanks, man, he's pissed. Because he's like, man, how can you be doing Tebow when I'm supposed to be doing Tybo? Yeah. And people be getting it confused, talking about, oh, yeah, I got my Tebow tape. And he's like, man, it's Tybo. And they're like, man, listen, it's Tebow. How are we doing Tebow now? Yeah, it'd probably be an even bigger concern if it was 1998. But, yeah, things get, you know, I hate when things get confusing. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I mean, God dang, Craig died in the fag, too. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, All right, buddy. man. Wait, I got to ask you a question. All right, hurry up. Why did the people say that 18 to life was a fag? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, we lost the Ed. We lost him. <laughs> All right. There he goes. He had making friends wherever he was. Oh, yeah. Do we must be at that spot in your house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ed. Be sure and listen to the uh, Ed Show tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You want to host it, Larry? No, I do not. I didn't want to host this show. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This afternoon, fun. Larry's like, let's not even do it. Let's just bag the show. Yeah. Yeah, I did. But look at all the fun we've had tonight. It's been great. It's been good fun, but that was like 20 minutes of the worst trash talk I've ever heard. <laughs> Between Irv and the Ed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no, you're a duty it. head. No, you're a duty head. No, you're a duty head. I kept waiting for it to pick up, and it never really picked up. No, it never took off. Yeah, that's pretty, but, uh, pretty good. It is what it is, um, It is what it is. Now, uh, Larry, uh, yeah. one of your favorite TV shows premiered yesterday. Yeah! <laughs> uh, yep, Storage Wars. Yeah, yeah we were talking about the audience. Yeah. Season 3? I don't know. Sure. Yeah, it sounds right. about right. Three. It's not. I don't think it's four. It is A and E's number one rated TV show. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. They only. It's only on at least seven, eight hours a day on A and E. I love it though, because if it's Tuesday or Wednesday and there's nothing on, just put on A and E, and you know storage wars will be on. That's true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. You always got that. Yeah. So what? Did Did you have a chance to watch? Uh, yes, I, I did watch them. Um, I can't even remember what happened on them right now, but uh, I did watch them. Uh-huh. It's pretty much the same stuff as last year. Oh, uh, Barry's mom was on the first episode. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Barry's mom. Looking good. That's pretty funny. Yeah. You know who else then, was looking uh, good? Brandy. Yeah, you love Brandy. Dude, did you see, like, uh, I don't know if it was the first episode, the say she had, like, just, like, this gray tank top on and, uh, like, real flat stomach with gigantic jugs. It looked good. Real good. Like, seriously, like, why, why is she with that guy, though? He's so douchey. And uh, that would be Jared. Yeah. You know what else Young I don't get, like, though? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, you know, at the beginning of the show where they all, like, you know, they all come walking down the hall, the young gun, the gambler, the mogul, the collector. Mm-hmm. Like, how come Brandy's not part of it? Like, why can't, like, she be the bitch? You know what I mean? And, like, mm-hmm. why, you know, the, the pay the lady lady... Uh-huh. Like, why, like, if you notice, like, in the first season, like, she's part of the credits, but then they take her off the credits. Like, th- that's a sexy oh. show over there on the A&E. No, I never noticed. Is the auction, is the auctioneur still on? Yeah, Dan. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Dan. Yeah, yeah, Dan. Yeah, I guess Dan he's Dot- not the auctioneur. He would be the auctioneer, huh? Yeah. yeah, the auctioneer. Yeah. Now, is yeah, that the like- worst to pay in show business? <laughs> that is not a good-looking uh, rug. And it's, it's got to be. You know what? Really, I, don't, right? I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know if I've ever really paid that. <laughs> really? You never yeah. spotted that. I'm well. always looking to see what Brandy's doing. <laughs> All right. Brandy. But, so you didn't watch the episode yet? Or? Yeah, I watched them today. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what did you think yeah. of them? Like you said, it was the same shit, different day. <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing real. You know, groundbreaking or too exciting there. Yeah, you find so, something that works. I guess you just stick with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. They you know they buy some lockers. They open the doors. They find junk and they move on. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, 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 I don't want to like the show because like like you said, like nothing changes. It's just the same shit every 
episode is the same show. But yet yeah. I watch every show, and I've seen every episode at least four or five times. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen them a lot because, like like I said before, when there's nothing on, just put it on for background noise, you know, storage wars. Yeah, background TV. Yep. Now, yeah. our buddy Michigan Frank, who we mentioned earlier, he actually attended a storage auction uh, this past week. All right, let's hear about this. Yeah, because uh, where was it at? Uh, somewhere in Pittsburgh. I don't know. Shady Side, maybe? Somewhere like that? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Look at him and his uppity ass. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what he's hoping, that it's like a nicer neighborhood. Maybe there'd be better stuff in there, you know? But, because uh-huh. uh, well, he, well, I don't know what, what uh, sequence I should tell the the, the story, but because he actually broke down the, the the Storage Wars TV show takes place usually in like Orange County or L.A., right? Yeah, it's part. out in California for the most part. Yeah. And he broke down like millionaires per capita <laughs> of that area, and he's like, they got a bunch of millionaires or at least wealthy people. And here in western Pennsylvania, you know, it's not exactly the uh, French Riviera, you know? People I hear here, you. Uh-huh. But uh, if you're he- talking Pitts- Pittsburgh, though, Shadyside and Squirrel Hill is where the money is. They're all right yeah, and there. And once again, don't quote me on it being in Shadyside, but it sounds like it sounded right. I don't know. All right. But because um, he, he was like a supposedly nicer neighborhood. But his theory is here in western Pennsylvania, and people put stuff in something in a storage locker, and they know it's worthwhile. They go and get it. They don't just leave it there, you know. But yeah, out in true. California, people with money, eh, who cares if they leave something, a couple grand, you know. Yeah. So that was his theory. So he goes to this auction, and it was an indoor auction. Oh, nice. He would have preferred the outdoor raining. auction. You know? yeah. yeah, but he said in the indoor one, it's kind of weird because, uh, as you can tell on the show, you got to, like, get in a line, and everyone goes by it. And he said it, it yeah. took more time, you know. And, and there were nine auctions uh, nine lockers, I should say, up for auction. And but but I said, well, how long did it take? And he said, oh, overall, just about an hour for all nine. So that's pretty good. You know? Really? Yeah. And he said it was. Uh, There's no fee. He didn't have to pay a fee to get in or anything. So that's nice. And uh, tr- yeah, he said it was pretty crowded. But he said there was an auctioneer, and uh, the the guy uh, had his wife there too, just like on the show. So huh. kind of weird. Yeah. And uh, he didn't bid on anything. <laughs> he didn't put a bid in on anything. No, he didn't put in lockers? a single bid on anything. So I'm like, did you do a little catchphrase? Did you say anything? Like, yep, or anything? He's like, he's like, no. And I said, well, did anyone there have a catchphrase? Uh, and, he, and he said, no. Uh, usually people were just like raising their hands or not. He said some of the veterans there would like just nod, you know, a little slow. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no one had a catchphrase. And uh, so I was like, well, well, he said all the stuff there was like a bunch of crap. He said, of the nine lockers, none of it was really worth bidding on at all. And he said most of them were going for like three, four hundred bucks. One, he saw one go for eleven hundred because it had like a big TV in it, but it was an old school TV, like a projection TV. You know, it wasn't even like a oh, yeah. or anything. So he's like, why would you even spend eleven hundred dollars for that? Like usually people are just giving those away if they're tired of them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he said there's nothing even worth bidding on, but because uh, people want to be like on the show, you know, they they they'll just bid on anything, and uh, so. that sounds like quite a disappointment there, Mike. Though yeah, he was very disappointed because he was hoping you know it'd be fun. Like, like he said, it was fun to go and to just check it out, but it's not some. He said it's not something you could probably do as like your job or anything, you know. Oh really? Yeah, he, he said it doesn't look like he'd be able to make at least from his limited experience, you know. From what he saw there, it's not promising. <laughs> but uh, well, he's I, I, cheap, anyways, though. Uh, yeah, he. <clears throat> I think he said one one of the lockers went for like nine bucks or something. Nine? No, how do you not just buy a nine dollar yeah. locker just in case? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I guess there's like nothing worth. I would have thrown ten bucks at it just in case. There's got to be a necklace in there, <laughs> or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? A pair of earrings. There's got to be something in there that you can make a few bucks on. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. So the storage yeah. auction scene not not as entertaining as you might think. But. Huh? Now was Brandy there? No, no, she was not. And then, and then Frank told me another story. Uh, he was flying back. Uh, he was in Florida, and he was flying back from Florida, and he got trapped in a bathroom on an airplane. <laughs> and he's kind of claustrophobic, so he's freaking out. Oh. And it was before the plane took off, so he was like banging on the door, and I guess no one could hear him because of. Uh, like the engine starting up and stuff, and he he kept banging on the door like help I need help, and uh, he he said he he eventually like 
kicked it off the track a little bit, the door, and uh, he, he saw like an Asian fellow there, and the Asian fellow said, "Oh, I'll go get help," and uh, and Frank's like, "But he could barely speak English, you know, like the way he was talking. I don't think he could speak English." <laughs> so what would you do in that situation? He had to make a decision. Now I would have just sat there and waited for the fellow to go get the help, you know. What yeah. would you have done, Larry? Yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah he, just but he, he he doubted the the guy's ability to speak English and get help. And I was like, no, you got to trust him. Like he's you know he's going to do the right thing, that guy. You know. And of course, Frank he didn't want to wait, so he kicked the door down. Oh. Yeah, he he he, he like started kicking the door, <laughs> and eventually it, it kicked it right out. And then he just he just walked he just walked <laughs> out like nothing happened, you know. And I guess he said everyone in the plane turned around and was looking at him. And he's like, oh, don't worry, don't worry, I just got trashed in the bathroom, and he went and sat down. Oh like, my god! And like as he was coming up, I guess the the mechanic guy or the the guy in charge of the plane, I guess they have a guy there, like yeah, fix things if something breaks on in the air. And he came running down the the hall and goes, "Oh, what happened?" Because uh, the door was broken, and he and the guy looked at the door, and the door's you know hanging by a, a thread. You know, he's like, "Yeah, it looks like it did break." So then the captain has to get on the speaker and make an announcement, like the one bathroom shut. He's like, "People, the, the, the rear bathroom's uh, off limits now. We had a problem." <laughs> Everyone's looking at Frank, whoever the yeah. douchebag was who decided to yeah. Bruce Lee his way out. You could thank and him. Then, uh, uh, a little, a little bit later, he sees that guy, the the uh, janitor guy or the custodian or whatever. He he comes back down and that, he had it with a brand new door, and they had to install a brand new door. Holy hell! Yeah. It's like uh, it's like uh, the guys who change glass at the at the penguin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, Michigan Frank kicked his way out of the bathroom. Yeah. Wow, what a putz! I hate that yeah. guy. This is why Frank I hate him. Stories. Why is he in Florida? And he couldn't call tonight. I wanted him to call and tell these stories. But he uh, he had judo class. Yeah, judo. What the hell are you doing judo anyways? It's just a bunch of hips tosses. That's all judo is. Yeah, it's a bunch of throws and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so he, he's taking judo. He was taking uh, jiu-jitsu before. Uh-huh. And then he quit taking the jiu-jitsu because he, he, he said it was getting a little too uh, a little too rough. What, he was getting bounders? <laughs> That's exactly what right. you're saying. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I understand that then. <laughs> so, but Wednesday nights, I guess, is a judo class. So, huh. But maybe he'll come on and talk about judo sometime. That'd be great too. And uh, so I don't know what else is going on, Larry. What else do we have planned for the show? Oh, a little bit of hockey talk. Should we do hockey talk? No, uh, not yet. Did you watch uh, Hardcore uh, Pawn? No, I don't like hard, Hardcore Pawn. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did. I watched it, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, more of the same. But uh, you know, apparently, uh, you know, they're opening another store and everything. And uh, this season, uh, you know, big Darren McCarty's going to be on. Are you excited about yeah. that? Yeah. So did you see Darren McCarty? No, he wasn't on this episode. They, they, he was just uh, when this when this episode ended. He was um, just in the negotiating process of buying the new store off the guy. And you know, of course, uh, you know, Fatty McGee daughter and and Douchey McGee son. Oh, like, come on, Dad! What are you doing, Dad? This is a mistake, Dad. You know, and Dad's all like, "How much you want for this store?" And and, and Fatty's like, "Hey, that's that, that, that's money. I, I can't eat now. I can't eat. I can't. I'm so fat." But. You know, that's where the, you know, and they came up with the big to be continued and that sort of thing. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they haven't actually bought the store yet, so no Darren McCarty yet. But uh, tune in next week as Fatty Gets Fatter. <laughs> you able to see that. No, no, what what about this? If uh, Darren McCarty's right. running the store there and Claude Lemieux comes in to buy some cufflinks, what happens? <laughs> yeah. Just blast him into the, into the I'd like to see that. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, so, uh, anything else on the TV you've been watching, Larry? Um. No, I've been uh, I've been falling asleep way earlier than than I should be, uh-huh. way way too early. Yeah, I think like Saturday night I was sleeping before eight, and then uh, I know Sunday I was sleeping at six. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it's party. Time. Now, have you seen Saturday Night Live at all this season? No. I turned it on for a brief moment on Saturday, and I saw Emma Stone was the host. Okay. And uh, then I saw Coldplay was the musical guest, so I changed it immediately. Wow. Wow, yeah. Coldplay and Emma Stone. Who canceled? Yeah. Yeah. Once again, you know, i got nothing against Emma Stone, but I've had enough of her. I'm well, she's in the new Spider-Man, right? So you'll be seeing her all over the place now, too. Yeah, but that movie's not coming out for like seven months. I'm sure they'll start the uh, publicity now. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But, the kid um, from the uh, the notebook or whatever, the network. What's that? What's <laughs> that <laughs> called? Social network. Social network. Yeah. That's Spider-Man. The social notebook. Yeah. Yeah. The so. Hey, here's another thing I don't get. What well, what's with all these British dudes wanting to be American? Yeah, you know what seriously. I mean? Like he, you know, he, he's an American in the, in the social notebook. He's, you know, he's Peter Parker, obviously, so he's obviously going to be American. Why can't they get, you know, what I like to call an American to play these American parts? Why are these foreigners coming over and taking American jobs away? But you're always trying to pretend you have a British accent, so. I know, thing. but I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not very good at it though. Yeah. Nobody buys it. I I know one thing. I got a better British accent than Dave does. I know Dave thinks he has a good British accent, and he was trying to bust it out again today on his podcast, you know, when he's talking to old... Uh, handsome Hank? Yeah, yeah, Handsome Hank. You know, he's always talking with his British accent, but my British accent is better than Dave's British accent. But even still, I'm not taking roles away from anybody. You don't see me running over there and taking... I don't know who's big over there, Colin Firth? You don't see Benny me Hill? taking his job. <laughs> I think he's dead. He's definitely dead. Yikes. Um, dead. Now, did you uh, have anything else prepared for the show? Did you have your little game? Um, yeah, I, I got it ready. Yeah. All right, well, that'll be good then. Let's just talk a little bit of hockey, and then we'll do your game, all right? All right. Um, Is there anything else you had? Or? Uh, no. Not all right. really. Because the hockey, uh, Kid Crosby's still not back yet. I thought he was going to come back last weekend, and he didn't. I, I think maybe because of the back-to-back games. And then, uh, but uh, they're going on a Florida road trip. People are saying, well, he might come back on the Florida trip because the dads are going along on the trip. But I don't know. You think he's going to make his comeback at home, right? His first game back will be You would home. think. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? So I think they play the Islanders next Tuesday. So maybe that'll be the time to come back. And, i got news for you. This whole, the dad shtick is getting yeah. old fast. That was, yeah. It was funny like three years ago and then two years ago. Every team does it now. Pretty much every team has a dad. It's, it's all right. It's, it's lame. Yeah. I don't care about, you know, Sidney Crosby's dad and Chris Letang's dad and Malkin's dad. And Hey, how know. about that game last night that we recorded this on Wednesdays? Uh, they beat the two, the Colorado Avalanche on Tuesday, 6-3. They're down 3-1, 5 unanswered. How about that, Larry? Yeah. Yeah. I actually, uh, I, you know, I... I I was watching the game. I fell asleep when it was three one, and then uh, you know Nick came into bed, and uh, like I had woken up like in the third period, and I looked at the TV, you know, and I was sleeping or whatever, and I said, "Does that say six to three? And she's like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Oh, nice." And yeah, then I went back. Up. Malkin actually uh, scored a nice goal, kind of like a, an old school. I saw it. Goal. Yeah, like why doesn't he do that more? You know. Uh, well, he's not motivated. Eight point seven million dollars isn't enough to motivate him to score goals on a consistent basis for some reason. And Chris Letang had a sweet goal. Yeah. And of course, James Neal scored again. Score. So. Yeah, I, I like the James Neal. Yeah. I think he had three points last night. That guy, he's crazy. Yep. But it's funny though. It, like they always wanted to get a winger for Crosby, a winger for Crosby. And now, when Crosby's out, now it was expected Neal would play with Crosby. But now with Crosby being out. Uh, Neil looks great with Malkin and Stevie Sullivan, you know. So Steve sure. Sullivan, is this guy ever going to score? I mean, he's got one goal. Yeah, he's, he's got, got one, one goal, goal, but he's been setting goals up. He set up James Neal for his goal last night. It was a beautiful pass. So uh, I'm sure Malkin is going to stick with Neil when he, even Crosby comes back. So I don't know. okay. So we're still going to need a winger for Sid. You see what I'm saying? But uh, uh, the other big news in hockey: uh, what oh, Milan Lucic hit Ryan Miller. Did you see that, Larry? No, I didn't. And Ryan Miller's crying about it and stuff. Uh, Lucic could have had a breakaway. He pushed the puck too far in front and ahead of him there. So he's trying to chase it down. Miller comes out to the bottom of the right circle and, and swing, swats it away. But Lucic just uh, finishes his check on him. Bang. Knocks him silly. And uh, Miller's helmet goes flying. And uh, Miller's now out with a concussion. But uh, i got news for you. I don't have a problem with the hit. Now, you haven't seen it, so it's tough for you to say. But it was a clean hit. Now, you can't hit the goalie. You've got to try and avoid the goalie at all times, and maybe he didn't do what he had to do to avoid the goalie. But it wasn't a cheap shot. Miller's crying about it like a little girl. Uh, here's an idea, Ryan Miller. When you, when you come out of the net to play the puck, even though they're not supposed to hit you, you need to expect to get hit, especially when yeah, you see exactly. Milan Lucic coming right at you. Like, Miller plays the puck and just acts like, oh, I'm free to do whatever I want. No, you gotta, if you're going to come out of the net to play the puck in that situation, expect to get hit. Uh, so quit crying about it. And I don't even know if he really has a concussion. It seems a little silly. It seems a little suspicious. Another conspiracy, Larry. Because they didn't even come out. They weren't even going to come out that he had a concussion. But uh, they did. They even admit that they did it on purpose to try and get Bleach suspended. 
So I, I don't know. So we'll, we'll see how long Miller's out of the lineup. But uh, they may have just been giving him a day off. So we'll, we'll see. But, uh, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with the hit. It was a clean hit. He didn't, he didn't target the head. It, he didn't deliver an elbow. It was nothing. It was a collision more than a hit. Like, Lucic is a big fella. He's not the most agile of people. So uh, he just ran into him. And I, I honestly don't have a problem with that play. And then uh, who else? Uh, Chris Stewart got suspended three games for uh, hitting Nick Cronwall from behind. Um, Cronwall kind of skates in front of him right before he pushes him. But, hey, Chris Stewart, you can't push a dude in the back. Just don't do it, and it's not a problem. So I've never heard of Chris Stewart. Yeah, all right. Um, what else? Uh, oh, the Islanders jerseys. Tell the people about the Islanders jerseys. Try and describe them for the people. Paint a uh, they, look like, they look like something a Pee Wee team would wear. They just say Islanders across the front with, like, a number underneath that. Well, well you're burying the lead here, though. Yeah. The jerseys are black. The jerseys are black, and the the Islanders in the front are written in orange letters. And then you got two big orange (laughs) numerals on the for the player number on their belly, and on the sleeves, and and the shoulders are like gray or something. It's just an awful, awful jersey. Just it is. It's so bad that I even tweeted at at New York Islanders today, telling them how shitty their jerseys are. Yeah, <clears throat> just when you think the Islanders can't come up with a worse jersey than the Fisherman jersey, I, I think the Fisherman jersey is better than this, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's nothing worse than the number on the belly. That is lame. I hate yeah, the that. Thrashers did it uh, for a while there, and uh, but yeah, the the uh, the orange on black it's just awful, just awful. And then like the, 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 I'm looking at them now, like the the the, the like the, the brightish blue on the call or like on the the cuff of the shirt like the, it matches absolutely nothing else on the jersey <laughs> it really is uh stunning like who designs these hockey jerseys cuz it's that is like it was just like hey we got a little bit of this left over and a little bit of that all right we'll just sew it on the cuff and then uh well what about the shoulder pad thing oh make it as big as we we possibly can all right yeah let's do that and you know what else I, i'm really i hate laces mike though i hate the yeah. lace fuck it was kind of cool uh when they brought them back like i don't know 10 years ago or so teams started yeah, doing the laces it was kind of nifty like the bruins i think did it and the rangers they're like oh it's an old school little twist you know the laces and then yeah you know uh, but the islanders are doing it with me really i don't know yeah it's terrible i hate the lace these are some of the worst jerseys I've ever seen. They yeah, really they, are. If you haven't seen them, go uh, go to the Puck Daddy. Uh, I'm sure they have it over there. And it's just it's just awful. It's just awful. And when they, this design first leaked, it, it leaked several months ago. Uh, they didn't have the <clears throat> the big orange numbers on the belly, but everyone was looking at this jersey saying, oh, that's just silly. There's no way that could be the official third jersey of the Islanders. It's just too god awful. Nope, sure enough, there it is. Yeah. There's Islanders. It's pretty bad. Yeah. The only thing that could be worse is like, um, remember those like, remember those duck jerseys with like the big cartoon duck on them? Yeah, busting out of the ice. Yeah. Yeah, that, those might be a little worse. What about the St. Uh, Louis Blues? Uh, remember those uh, those crazy wacky third jerseys? They have the trumpets on the bottom and stuff. And you know what? I didn't hate those. I really wow. didn't. I didn't hate those. I didn't love them, but I didn't hate them. I hate these. I hate these Islander jerseys. Uh, that's my opinion on those. Um, Plus, what I, else I don't like calendars. Yeah, no one does. Um, so, <clears throat> is that all the hockey? Any else? Any nah. Hockey nah. All right. So, Larry, you made a game. Well, I, I don't know if I made a game. I, I just have, you know, this is just something to do. That's all. So, uh, what I was going to do is, uh, you know, there was this game I, I was thinking about doing, but I, I needed two players for it. So basically what I was going to do is I, I, I was going to do a game kind of based on the old game show Card Sharks, okay? But instead of using cards, I was going to use movies from Rotten Tomatoes. So I would give you a movie, and then you would have to say, you know, I, I would give you a movie. I would say just for example, uh, you know, whatever, Tron. Tron is 38%. Now, you know, the next Over. movie would... Over. Yeah, so the next the next movie I would say, like, you know, Jerry Maguire, and you would have to say whether it was higher or lower than Tron. And instead of, like, you know, on the card sharks, they would have, you know, you'd get a 10, and then you'd say, oh, the next card's going to be lower than a 10, and lower than a 10. So, you know, th- that'd be fine and dandy if we had two people to do it. So, um, since it's only you playing tonight, I decided to switch it up a little bit, and in, instead of going with the card sharks route, 
I decided to do this in the style of Cliffhanger, Mike Dell from The Price is Right. With the oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I have to, every point I'm off in the rating, it, the little guy goes up the hill one time. Yes, but. exactly. So I think I think on The Price is Right, I think that, that, that little mountain climber goes 25. I think so, yeah. But, yeah, but since this is so, you know, since movies are so subjective and everything, I, I was going to give you 50. I was going to let you go Ooh. up to 50. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you went past, you know, over the 50 mark, then, you know, obviously you lose. Yeah. So I figured, you know, we'll try it out. We could do this a couple times. I got a, you know, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 movies here that I have listed that we could try. You have the sound effect of the mountain climber. I do have it, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, nice. Because I remember we used to have it in the old days. We used to play this game with NHL contracts. Oh, really? Was yeah, in show? the early days of the show, yeah. <clears throat> I remember we oh. played this with our buddy Matthew Sikoski. And uh, Matthew came on, and we played Mountain Climber with NHL contracts. Yeah. Wow, I, I don't I don't even remember that. We've been yeah. on the air so long. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus God, I don't even remember any of this shit. But uh, all right, so you know, I don't know. We could probably kill ten minutes doing this if you want to. Yeah, it'd be great. All right, all right. Well, let's see. Let me let me get a let me get a good solid one to start off with, and then we'll, you know. We'll, We'll, uh, we'll take it from there. And, and once right, again, <laughs> you're, you're going by the ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, which is like an aggregate site of all uh, reviews, and they put them yeah, together. Yeah, they compile ratings and reviews from all different critics, you know, big time, small time. Uh, you know, some of them are just uh, people that were just regular, you know, Joe Schmoes who may comment so much that, uh, you know, eventually the, uh, Rotten Tomatoes will incorporate them into being like a, a reviewer. Like, if you know, if, if you come, you know, if you put enough reviews up on Rotten Tomatoes, they'll eventually consider you as like a, uh, some sort of a reviewer. I mean, you're obviously not Claudia Puig or whatever from USA <laughs> Today or uh, what's that guy, uh, Peter good. Travers or anything like Peter that. Peter uh, Yeah. He's Is that his name? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's very good. Did you ever hear that guy? Yeah, he's sick. Uh, I've never I'm heard not a fan talk, of his work. No. Let's put it that way. Okay. He's but, from um, Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah, well, whatever. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh, to give an example, though, a, a couple current movies we were discussing earlier. Uh, Jay Edgar, which looks like it'll be a, a gangbusters film, to borrow or Pal Dave's uh, terminology, because it's got DiCaprio, it's got uh, Eastwood directing, and it's about an interesting political figure in our history. So you think, oh, that's going to be a great movie. It's only like 41% approval. Wow. See, now that's bad. I would have definitely went yeah, way that's higher not good. than that. And, and now, is there cross-dressing involved in this movie? I Probably. 5.0, I uh, went to go see it, you know, my old man, and uh, him and uh, the old lady. And uh, they, they said, yeah, it's about what it should be, like a four or five. They weren't impressed. So, yeah. Now, did he and then, there was cross-dressing in this movie? I didn't ask about the cross-dressing, no. Um, I asked him if, you know, there was stuff about him framing and blackmailing Martin Luther King, and they said, yeah, they did discuss that a little bit. But uh, um, <clears throat> the other movie, Jack and Jill, Adam Sandler. Yeah. It just looks hilariously funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> classic, classic Sandler here right now, of course. Well, it, today, I had actually seen it down as low as 3%. Today, when I checked, it was 4% approval. That's as low as I've ever seen a movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Like, have you ever seen anything below 3? Like a major release? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a major yeah, I, release like that? I, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen zero before on on wow. Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd never seen anything below like a six or a seven before. So three was like, whoa, look at that. I see. Uh, I saw Twilight starting to climb back up again. It, it was at eleven. Four the, yeah, it was at four the other day. Oh, nice. But there was somebody did give it a, a favorable review. It wasn't a it wasn't a ringing endorsement or anything. It's like, hey, you know, it sucks but it doesn't totally suck. It was kind of the gist of the review, but it was enough to give it a one you know, of the nine ra- or reviews it has right now, that was you know, one one good one, so No what about the about uh, Kristen Stewart? What do you, what do you think on that, Larry? The what? The Kristen Stewart, yeah your nay. <laughs> no, God no. Yeah. Not even a little bit. Yeah. You? Yeah, I'd say nay on that as well. All right, Larry. Okay. Let's All, right. All right, so, uh, you know, we'll just start solid, and then uh, we'll work from there. So, all right. Now, as you know, on the cliffhanger, Mike Dell, 
what they normally do is they give you three little uh, three little prizes there. You got a bid on, you know, like yeah. hey, here's a toaster, and here's a, you know, here's a, you know, some kind of electric razor, and over here finally we got uh, whatever, you know, uh, a cell phone package. So then, like, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta get all three of those within, you know, the twenty five dollars, and uh, and if you do, you end up winning like a, a new bedroom suit or something like that. So we'll give you three movies. If if you can keep the three movies within fifty percent or fifty points, you win. And what I'm winning a prize. Yeah. No, you want to no. know what it is? Yes. It's a Backpage Press T-shirt. <laughs> wow! Look at that. Yeah, our official sponsor, Backpage Press, will. Uh, okay. You know, uh, I'll let you go over to BackpagePress.com, Mike Dell. Pick any uh-huh. shirt you want, and I'll pay for it. <laughs> oh, wow, look at you. Wow. Yeah. So, that's only you, though. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, you know... Yeah, are we going to take calls and let other people play? No, no, just you. Right. Only you. All right, Mike Dell, so uh, let's start out real uh, right here off the top. Uh, let's start at Lost in Translation, Mike Dell. What do you think? Oh, Lost in Translation. Lost yeah. in Translation. Now, this is an interesting one because I love the movie. You love the movie. But uh, for the most part, critics loved it. But a lot of people uh, didn't like it, you know? Yeah. They, they thought it was too uh, highfalutin or something, you know? You know, this it's, is what they do. They, you know, this is what they do on card sharks. They rationalize. But we're not yeah. playing that. But uh, this is going to be helpful. And, and I love the movie because uh, Bill Murray is always great. And uh, Scarlett Johansson. And it just opens up. Remember the opening shot, Larry? It's beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, lost in translation. I'm going to say uh, 93. Okay, Mike Dell. Lost in translation comes in at 95. Ah, look at that. See, I thought that was going to yeah. be uh, I was going to be off by more because it sounded like he was singing for a while. But uh, all right. Well, yeah, I only got one clip. It's about eight seconds. So. All right. It is what it is. All right. Um, all right, so that that's one. You only lost two points on that one. Mike. Yeah, that's I can you know, see that T-shirt right. now. It's going to be great, yeah. All right, well, uh, all right, let's go on to another movie that Mike Dell finds uh, fantastic. Mr. Mom. What does the crew Oh, Mr. Mom. Now, Mr. see, on my Mom. rating, it would be 100. Uh, yeah. Yours, it would probably be 100, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'll tell you this much: not a hundred. Yeah. Oh man. Not a hundred. I want to say seventy-six. Let's see. What does Cliffhanger say? Seventy-six percent. The critics come in at seventy-nine percent. Mike Dell. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm very good. Yeah. So. You only lost three, so you got forty-five points to be <laughs> in on the on the final movie, and you win a free T-shirt from BackpagePress.com, Mike. Though, oh, are you excited good. about that? I'm very excited. I, I love the T-shirts, you know. So that's good. All right, let's see. Let me pick. Let me pick a doozy. Let me pick a doozy here. <laughs> this is gonna be something. All right, Mike. Though, no, you'll know every movie. Every movie on here. All right, how about this? Our, our pal the Dave loves it. I love it. I don't know if you love it. I think Adam Rank loves it. I think it's 1981. Flash Gordon. What do the critics think about Flash Gordon? From uh, this is a tough one, but luckily I have 45 to, to play. Yeah, with. you got 45 points to tinker with. <laughs> yes, it would probably be wise to just go at 50, and you know. <laughs> <take my chance. laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, Flash Gordon, because it's interesting. This is what you call a cult favorite. Uh, I think the critics are rather harsh <laughs> with the Flash Gordon. Um, hmm. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll make it a little interesting. I'll, I'll go 55. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. All right, Mike Dell. It comes in at 82%. 82 percent. Oh, Eighty-two. Wow. So you still you still you still wound in there like uh, I think you still had twenty eight points to tinker around with twenty eight points. Uh, I think uh, eighteen. I ended up with yeah, eighteen points. Is that what it was? Eighteen. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, either way, yeah, you still won a free T-shirt from BackpagePress.com. Wow, nice. Backpage Press. All right, now, 
you want to try it in the stylings of card sharks, where we could play yeah, higher yeah, or lower? Yeah, yeah, the card sharks version. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. We'll start. Uh, let's see. We'll go. Let's see. Baby mama. We'll start it with baby oh. mama, Mike Bell. Sixty three percent. Now, do I have to mama. give the percentage? Or no. Okay. No. Now I'm gonna. This is where we're starting. Sixty three. Now I'm gonna give you the next movie, and you gotta say whether it's higher or lower than sixty three percent. Baby mama got sixty three. Yeah. Isn't now, don't you, what do you need to get, like, a fresh rating, 65? Uh, 60. Oh, all right. So, all right. Yeah, you that? need 60. 60 or higher. All right, Mike Dell. So, Baby Mom at 63%. Okay, now, our next movie coming up on the board, Rocky 3. Is Rocky 3 higher oh. or lower than 63%? Higher. Higher is... Oh, I'm so sorry. Rocky what? comes in at 60%. Rocky oh, three, that is terrible. Mr. T. Six. Yeah, Club 60%. Yeah. Yeah, Club I thought that was at least yep. 68, you know. Oh, man. Oh, so good. Yeah, so I'm out already. Yeah, you're already done. Did I lose my T-shirt? I have to give back mm, my T-shirt? Yeah, you do. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right, so let's we'll try one more round of card sharks. Yeah, I like right, the first one. It was over too quick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you didn't even get to play. All right, how about this? We'll start off with Caddyshack. Caddyshack, Caddyshack. comes in at 75%, Mike Dell. Yeah. All right. Our next movie on the list, Tombstone. Is Tombstone higher or lower than 75%? Lower. Let's see, lower. He says lower on Tombstone. And Tombstone what? comes in at 77%, Mike Dell. <laughs> oh, 77%. Uh, you're being yeah. ridiculous, 75, 77. But, uh, hey, Tombstone, let's face it, uh, you know, Val Kilmer's great in that, but that movie's terrible, you know? Yeah, I agree. It's not a good movie. Like, you no. Know. No, not at all. All right, you want to try one more round? One more yeah, because it's not taking up much time, so yeah, let's try it again. I think I owe you a t-shirt <laughs> now, so. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll take one. All right, Mike Dell. Uh, let's do this. Sudden Impact. Clint Eastwood movie. Ooh, Clint Eastwood Dirty Harry, fifty-nine percent. All right. Sudden Impact. Now, is that the one with uh, my buddy uh, uh, David Soul Hutch? Is that the one with Hutch? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm All not right. sure. All right. Sudden Impact, fifty-nine percent. Is Harold and Kumar go to White Castle higher <laughs> or lower? Then 59%, Mike Dell. Oh, man. See, I would put it much, much lower, but I'm guessing uh, a higher? Higher is? Is that your final answer? <laughs> yes. Higher is correct, Mike Dell. You got one right. Do you want to take a guess at what Harold and Kumar got? I would say like around 61, 62, something like that. Ooh, we were looking for 74. Wow, really? Yeah, seventy-four percent. Are you going to go see the third installment of that travesty? I don't think so. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's it's already been out for like three weeks. It's probably gone. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so you know. So now we moved a little thing across. So because normally on the card sharks you have five cards. You got to get all the whole way across five cards yeah. to win a round. So now I got to go. I got to work off Harold and Kumar, right? And you said. Yeah, off of seventy-four percent. Seventy-four. Okay. Okay, so next movie on the list, Die Hard, Mike Dell. Is Die Hard higher oh, or man. lower than 74%? Higher. Die Hard is indeed higher, Mike Dell. Now, you want to take yeah. a guess at what Die Hard scores on the Rotten Tomatoes meter? 83? Ooh, we're looking for 94%. What? Die Hard, exactly. <laughs> That's a little ridiculous, right? That's way ridiculous. I still love Die Hard, but I don't love it 9.4, because that's the way but I I love it. it for the, the purpose of this game, because, you know, that's like getting a king, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so here we go, Mike Dell. You're at Die Hard. Um, let's see. Next on the list. Well, obviously, uh, here we go. Let's see. So I'm trying to set it up so that this uh, works out pretty good at the end. You're trying to trick me, basically, um, what you're trying to do. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're trying to find, all like, right, a 95. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll, we'll make it easy. All right, next on the list, Mike Dell. Uh, we'll go with uh, The Breakfast Club. 
Is the Breakfast Club um, higher or lower than 94%? Your favorite movie of all time. Uh, it's got to be lower than 94%. It's definitely lower, Mike Dell. Yeah. Do you want to take a guess at what the Breakfast Club got? Well, see, it's kind of tough because if you're uh, – if it's, we're just talking critics. But you said fans do play a part in this if you're like a really – I think so, yeah. But, you know, you got to realize, like, some of the older movies, they don't, um, like, some of the older movies don't have the same number of reviews either. Okay. Like well, the, if Breakfast Club has, is it should be around 72, I'd say. Mm-hmm. We're looking for 91. <laughs> <laughs> That's absurd. Yeah, 91%. Damn, There's yeah. no way it got 91% approval when it came out. No way. That's what it says. <laughs> right. So uh, you know, finally, Mike Dell, this is the this is the run the show, the Great Muppet Caper. Ah, oh, no, this is, this is terrible. Ninety one percent. Oh, that's tough because it, it's a glorious film, the Great Muppet Caper. What color are their hands before? <laughs> What's he saying? So much Charles Grodin's best work. And uh, Ed, do you have the paper towels? Yeah, that's always a good one. And uh, yeah. man, it. it it's got to be higher. I'm going higher. For all the marbles, uh, Great Muppet Caper, higher than 91%. Oh, that is ridiculous. I'm, I'm gonna... so sorry, Mike Dow. Do you want to take a stab at what the Great Muppet Caper comes in at? 90? <laughs> no. We were looking for 72. Uh, see, that's not. There needs to be an investigation. If Breakfast Club's <laughs> at 91, the Great Muppet yeah. Caper's at. 73 or whatever? Oh, come on. That's absurd. There's your conspiracy. Die Hard the 94, thing. really, and Great Muppet Caper 73. Hey, I don't rank them. I don't rank them. Yes. All right, uh, I got a couple movies left. We'll just see if you can guess what their ranking is, the, the right. movies I had listed. How about the original Twilight, Mike Dell? What do you think that that came in at? Uh, again, it's tricky because the other – but I, I'd say legitimate critics would give it, like, uh, 35. Well, it's 49. 49. Oh, okay. That's a little higher than I thought. I, I saw it. It's a piece of shit. How about Shawshank? Everybody's favorite movie ever. Oh, my the greatest movie ever made. I know, it's, but it's not that good. Yeah. Um, Terrible. But we've talked about it many times on the show, how it could be great if they change the ending. But we'll see. Uh, everyone knows that already. Um, I'd say 89. Ooh, very close. 90. 90. Yeah. Only for Shawshank. Uh, how about Gung Ho? Another Michael Keaton vehicle. Ah, uh, yeah, it, an underrated Michael Keaton movie. I enjoy it very much. Uh, George Went is in it. Uh, yeah, Keaton. George Went is in it. I'd, I'd say if uh, what, what did Mr. Mom get? It, was, it only got like seventy. Mr. Right? Mom was at seventy nine percent. Well, Gung Ho couldn't be more than like sixty four. Uh, Gung Ho also couldn't be more than thirty six because it's at thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, thirty-five percent. Thirty-five for Gung Ho. That's again. That's a travesty. We, uh, All right. How about this? What do you think? What do you think ranks higher? Uh, Good luck, Chuck, with Dane Cook and Jessica Alba, or basketball? Um, base, basketball is pretty much reviled by all critics. So uh, uh-huh. I'm going to say, Good luck, Chuck. Ooh, so you'd be so wrong. Wow. Basketball comes in at 42%, while Good Luck Chuck rang the bell at 5. <laughs> 5%. Five. Yeah. See, I thought basketball would be like around 21 and maybe Good Luck Chuck 22. <laughs> Somewhere around there. Basketball? Uh, yeah, I didn't see it start to finish because I don't think anyone has. But, uh, no. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I've seen worse movies. <laughs> yeah, high I've praise indeed. Worse. I got one more movie on here, Mike, though. Uh, Talladega right. Nights. Where do you think Talladega Nights uh, comes Talladega in? Talladega Nights. This is one uh, I thought would be terrible, and then I watched it. I was like, oh, that's a funny movie. I like Talladega Nights. Um, but I, but when it came out, I seem to recall the critics being mixed. Uh, I'll say 76. Ooh, 72. Hmm. That's a good solid guess, though. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. yeah. yeah don't don't yeah, F with me in the uh, mountain climber game, but... Uh, Card sharks, man. I need to practice. I don't know. Yeah, you would. You would definitely not win. See, the card sharks would definitely work better if we had another contestant. Because you know, in the card sharks, you can freeze if you don't like your percentage, and you know, oh. you get another card and all that sort of thing. You know. Yeah. But you know, if we're gonna just play solo, uh, cliffhanger is the way to go. Well, we could bring Jim Ivino on, and we can do like a Chinese subtitled film version. In the... Oh yeah. 
Crouching Tiger, Which, Hidden Dragon, yeah, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Which is a lot of that stuff. Uh, are we out of show, Larry? Did we fill up the show? Yeah, we got 18 seconds left. Oh, okay. Because I had another celebrity story. Remember last week I told a celebrity story? I had another Yeah, one. I want to hear it. All right. Well, this Paolo Manchi told me another story about a celebrity. Last week it was Anthony oh, Michael Hall. Oh, it's a she? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a she. So uh, this week it's uh, who should I uh, – well, yeah, I don't. I just want to say it's a celebrity. I don't want to give it too much away. So this fella is skiing, all right, uh-huh. and he's having a good time, and he's skiing up and down, or I guess down the slope. You don't ski up a slope traditionally when you ski. Do you like skiing, Larry? I no, I don't. Yeah, I, don't I tried like to go once. Cold. Yeah, in sixth grade, it, it didn't end well. I'll put it that way. I can do that. Well. Um, so the guy skiing on the slope, he's having a grand old time, zipping all over the place. And here this other fella skates by and knocks him down. Bang, knocks him right down. And uh, so the the first guy, he's very upset, you know. And uh, his whole day ruined because of this jackass knocking him down. So, he, <clears throat> But the other guy stopped and, and, you know, comes back and it's a check on him. So that was nice, you know. But the, the first fella is still very upset. And he's throwing off his hat and his gloves. And he goes, hey, I don't know what he said. He's like, hey, who... What were you doing? Who, who, do you, who the fuck do you think you are? You know, he's very upset, you know. And, and the other guy, he knocks it down. He takes off his glasses, and he says, I'm LeVar fucking Burton. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> LeVar Burton from Reading Rainbow. LeVar Burton. Good Lord. Yeah. Now, <laughs> LeVar that's not Burton. the same guy. He wasn't in Blazing Saddles. No, no. <laughs> that was Cleavon Little. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I don't LeVar know. LeVar Burton, Doherty from uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, Reading Rainbow. Oh, okay. that guy, okay. Yeah, with the glasses. Of, yeah, yeah, LeVar fucking right. Burton. Yeah. Wow. Like, see, I, I wouldn't recognize story. you. I would have said yeah. Wayne Brady? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have said. Now, who, uh, who is this? Who is this she that I, you know that I've got knows sources. all these celebrities? I've got sources out in Hollywood. And wow. they, they, uh, they tip me off about breaking celebrity, you know, stories and scandals. So maybe maybe every week we'll have a celebrity story corner. And, uh, Are we going to be able to get this lady on the show at some point? Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Nice. Now, if we ever make a documentary about your life, can we call it They're from Hollywood? I guess. I don't... Yeah, your sources, yeah. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, They're from Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Andy yeah, because Kaufman, I'm you're from. not having run-ins with celebrities, and you're definitely not from Hollywood, but other no. people are. Yeah, and I hear about them, you know. So they're from Hollywood, yeah. Yeah. Now, l- let me ask you this. Uh, do, does, does this lady listen to the show? Uh, she has in the past. Uh, now, here's the question, you know, that's on everybody's mind. Has she asked about Larry? Yes. <laughs> I like where this is going. Yeah. I definitely like where this is going. Yeah. Now, give me a, a yes or a no. Yes. Whoa, I definitely like where this is going. Yeah. All right, tune in next week. Larry's getting a little bit. So uh, <laughs> that's something to look forward to. Huh? Maybe uh, maybe we'll actually it, call Pat Picker. Well, we won't. well next week's Thanksgiving Eve. So yeah, we, see, I didn't even, I didn't even uh, email Pat yet. I forgot. You know, I'm very busy. You know what next week is, too, Mike Dell? That's the beginning of uh, River Bottom Nightmare Band season, where we can uh, start Ooh. using that as our, our intro music. Nice. Yeah. 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 Maybe, do you want me to do, like, a conspiracy about the first Thanksgiving and how the pilgrims, like, took advantage of the Indians and stuff? I saw that on Roseanne already. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Roseanne covered that one. So DJ beat me to it. Uh, yeah, DJ. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. DJ. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't hey, know. Hey, you know what I was watching last night, though, Larry, on the TV was uh, the Big Bang Theory. And I saw yeah. your favorite little girl, uh, Kelly Cuoco or whatever her name is. Yeah. What do you think of that? Hey, she's an attractive lady. What, what's her name mean? Kaylee or Kelly? Kaylee? Kaylee, yeah. Kaylee, yeah. Kelly Cuoco. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, you know, I've been listening to your podcast there, Mike Dow, your uh, Stuff You Missed in History class. Yeah, Larry asked for a podcast recommendation, and I, of uh-huh. course, rattled off, you know, all these, like, conspiracy uh, stuff. And he's like, well, that might scare me. So uh, I said, well, how about this one, Stuff You Missed in History Class, which is, uh, I, uh, what's the the name of the company that does it? I don't even know. Uh, uh, how Stuff Works. How Stuff Works. Now, this is why I, I like this show. It's, kind of, it's just two ladies. Larry will tell you about it in a minute. But the How Stuff Works, they also try to do a conspiracy podcast where they try to talk – it's just bullshit. It's just garbage. It's the uh, basic mainstream 
conspiracy nonsense. They, they they make it sound like it could be a conspiracy, and then they fill it with like ridiculous stuff so to make it look silly. But so don't pay attention to their conspiracy one. But this one with the two ladies that Larry likes, it's it's not bad. Tell the people about it, Larry. Well, basically what they do is, yeah, like you said, if you go to HowStuffWorks.com, they have all different kinds of podcasts. Uh, they got weather ones, and they got all different stuff. Well, this is in the history section, and it's basically just two ladies that just review, like, history. Like, they'll, they'll talk about Marie Antoinette one time, and uh, D.B. Cooper one time, and maybe uh, Lizzie Borden one time, you know, like, they just tell you the story of what really went down, you know, like uh, they they don't just browse over it, they go into specifics, and the podcast is about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, and um, like you said, it's it's two ladies, uh, well, they're, they're actually girls, because if you've ever seen the picture of them, they're kind of young looking, I, I, I'd say they're probably mid to late 20s, and yeah. uh, one's named uh, Sarah Dowdy, and the other one is something real weird, like the Blina Chapalowski or something, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'd don't be know sweet if that was really her name. It, 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 that's not her name, but it is some, I think the Blina is close to her first name. Well, that's, that's just ridiculous, the Blina. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't know what that means, but uh, mm -hmm. anyways, um, so basically, you know, they just talk about history and give you a little history lesson, but here's the selling point, Mike Dell, and I, I've talked to you off the air about this, and, uh, you know, I've talked to Craig Dodge about this, too, and this is what he doesn't like about the show, is 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 the uh, the Sarah Dowdy girl. She's got a lisp, and I love it. <laughs> I love it, Mike Dell. It's almost like she's giving me a history lesson, but still kind of baby talk. So, like, she, she's a good-looking girl, and she's, you know, a smart girl, but she talks like a baby, and I love the baby. I love the baby, Mike Dell. We got to get her on this podcast. I just want to hear her talk directly to me in the little baby voice. Yeah, we can try and get her on the show. Um, it's like yeah, it's we talked about this before. You you, you like uh, ladies who are almost cross-eyed. Yeah, yeah, like Kaylee Cole. And now like with the that. borderline speech impediment as well. Yeah, if I could get them both in the same thing, dude. Oh, <laughs> just Sarah Dowdy, girl, that lady who can't speak. Yeah, yeah, I'd be whacking all over the place. It's tough. It's tough. But yeah, like uh, you know, like I said, um, it's a good. It's a good show. Um, I'll be honest with you. It's. It's. It, there's no excitement. They don't really play sound effects or. Glitch. Yeah, it's very calm. You know? Yeah, it's very calm. Like if you ever saw. I, when I described balls, it to you, I, I said it's like delicious yeah. dish on Saturday Night Live. Wow. Yes. Yeah, the Play sweaty ball. ball skit on Saturday Night Live. It's exactly like that. They talk like real subdued. It's almost to the point where they're almost whispering. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, they don't really joke, and when they do joke around, it's pretty nerdy. Like they joke about, yeah. like, oh yeah, then, oh, how about the, you know, the Marie Antoinette and blah blah blah. You know, it's it's <laughs> real nerdy jokeage. You know what I mean? There's there's no banter. There's no pop culture reference or anything like well, that. Well, I've heard pop culture references. Uh, the episodes I've heard, I haven't listened to the show in over a year, probably. But uh, the, the few times I've heard, they were big fans of Arrested Development, and they would make Arrested oh, Development see, references. So, yeah. I know Lispy McGee is a big fan of the Harry Potter, and she brings that up <laughs> once in a while. But uh, other than that, I haven't heard them mention too much pop culture. Lispy McGee. But, uh, Lispy McGee, I love you. And you can follow <laughs> them on the, the Twitter. They're on the Twitters. I don't I don't know what their yeah. name is over there. but uh, Yeah, I like the show because, uh, like, what you learn in history class, uh, think of that's like the, the surface. Then they dig below that, and they give you more yeah. details and better information. But they don't quite dig all the way. You know? no. no. No, they don't ruin anything for you like yeah. Mike Dell likes to. They take it to the brink. They give you some deets, and uh, they're out. You know, it's only, like I said, 20 minutes. You know, they don't, they don't mess around too much. Like they when they did, I remember when I was researching the Paul Revere bit we did a couple of months back. I listened to them, and they did a swell job of the mainstream Paul Revere story. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like the, the mainstream as far as like more you get than you would get in history class, like as advertised. You know, and they had everything pegged, but they did, they want to go deeper to like the, the stories about uh, the fake stories about Israel Bissell and stuff. You know, that, that we did, yeah. Larry. Understand? Yeah, of course. But, I mean, you know. Yeah. You, you you like to take it to that extreme that makes us a little bit better than them, but uh, they also right. don't scare their audience. They also invite their audience to come back each and every episode. I'm like <laughs> myself.
but but I like them. Yeah. They do good work, and they're they're a very smart, uh, pleasing podcast. So yeah, give it a give it a go. Yeah, yeah, it's very very calm and soothing. It's a soothing podcast. If you if you're a fan of uh, the show like This American Life, I don't know if you've ever listened to that, Mike Dell, over on the NPR. Mm. But uh, that's another show that I've been listening to. Oh. Uh, they only they only come out once a week, Sunday nights. They release a new episode. But uh, you are, that's another. You very want me to tell you? Call. I got some stuff I could tell you about NPR if you want. What? Huh. <laughs> or do you want me to ruin it for you? Or? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll spare NPR. I don't want to. <laughs> but, yeah. Because, you know, I listen to NPR now, like, on the way to work yeah. and way home from work. Yeah, well, and, you uh, know, they're not as, you know, partial with awesome. what they make themselves believe. No, I'm sure. I mean, there's yeah. always an agenda, Mike, though. Everybody Follow has the money, agenda. Larry. Follow the money on NPR. It leads to some interesting places. Well, apparently the money comes from uh, some kind of, you know, like the Carnegie Library. I don't know. I hear them talk about them a lot, but, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know in the morning when, I, when I'm when i driving to work, uh, there's a guy on there named Steve Insky. Like, isn't that like something you call your buddies? Hey, Steve Insky, Steve you know Insky. what I mean? But that's his yeah. first name is Steve and his last name is Insky. Right, 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 right. Now, the thing I don't like about um, NPR is the drive home, because there's a show on there uh, uh, called Fresh Air. And this lady... Fresh Air, right? yeah. Yeah, you ever listen to it? Uh, no, what's the lady's name that hosts it, though? Uh, oh, Gail shoot. something or another. Gail because uh, I was uh, asking someone um, about really good interviewers, like, well, what should you, if I want to, you know, because we do a show here, Larry. I'm like, hey, I should learn some tips. And someone uh-huh. recommended to her, like, we said, oh, she's a really good interviewer. This lady is a retard and a half, Mike Dell. <laughs> Let me explain this to you. Because I've listened to the, probably for the last, uh, ever since the whole Penn State thing went down, I've boycotted any sort of uh, Pittsburgh sports talk radio. Because and and why is that, Larry? Because really? I don't want to, I don't, you're, <laughs> I don't want anybody to ruin Joe Paterno for me. You know what I, I mean? Joe like, Paterno whatever. Joe Paterno for you. Right. I don't even want to hear it. But anyways, so I moved over to NPR, 90.5 on the FM dial here, and, uh, this lady, I listened to her on the way home, and she's retarded, I swear to Christ. Because any time she has any sort of guest on the show that um, she wants to hold, like, an intelligent conversation with, because I've heard her, she has, like, a musician on sometimes, like, she had a musician on the other day, and they're talking about the new record, and that's fine and dandy. Well, today she had on some guy that was explaining to her why the rich only pay a certain amount of tax as opposed to the normal working man. And it was clear as day that she wasn't getting it. So she uh-huh. kept asking this dude, like, the same question over and over again, but she kept rewording it, like, to make her seem like she's really having an intelligent conversation with him, but he's just answering the same question over and over again. And it's like, how do you, how do you not just reach across the table and just blast her in the mouth and ask her, are you really fucking listening to me, lady, because you're a retard? You are a retard. That's what I'm saying. Very gross. Oh, terrible. Terry, Terry Gross, Gross, that's her name, yes. Yeah. Fresh Air, and, uh, Terry she, Gross. Are you looking her up? Yeah, I, I just looked up the name Terry Gross. Yeah. Did, did, did you get like a uh, Did you get like a Google image or? Um, let's see, I just hit it. Uh, it. Yeah, she has really short hair and glasses. And oddly enough, when you when you oh. type in NPR Fresh Air, uh, pictures come up of Zach Galifianakis <laughs> and uh, Louis C. <laughs> Who does she look like? I'm, I'm looking at her now. She kind of looks like a uh, man. Woody Maybe Allen? Maybe a man? little bit like um, uh, Sally Jesse Raphael, a little bit. A little like bit, a, yeah. A skinnier version of Sally Jesse Raphael? She's just an idiot, this lady. And I'm no, like, I don't know. That's not nice, Larry. You shouldn't be saying things like that about a fair person. You know? This lady. Now, here's another thing I don't get, Mike Dell. It's like um, when I listen to the NPR, she'll be like this. She'll be like, um, you know, hey, we're here with... Uh, you know, Joe Schmo, uh, we'll be back right after this break on Fresh Air. And then they'll yeah. go to, like, a 10, 15-second, like, jazz clip, yeah. and then they come back. There's, like, no commercial, so, like, why do you even go to the jazz? Like, <laughs> why don't why we do start doing that, Larry? Because I know some blog talk shows in the past and when I was putting together the bits, the, oh, around blog talk, why don't we do that? We haven't done that in a while. But uh, yeah. some shows would do that. They'd say, let's take a break, and they'd just play music for, like, a minute, and then they'd come back. Why don't we do that? I don't know. See, like, I know Dodge used to do that for a while so he could chug his uh, Arizona green tea and that sort of thing. But what do we... Hey, hey Larry, are you still on the Google Images for uh, that lady? Yeah. Keep panning down. 
Okay. There oh, is about. God. You see it? <laughs> Tina Fey, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's right, Tina Fey's down there. Yeah, I see her. I also see Sarah Silverman and Justin Timberlake for some reason. And then there's my buddy uh, Jason Schwartzman. I also see uh, you see 99, like right under Tina Fey? 99? No. Yeah. Where's 90? Oh. Uh. Like on my Parker Google Felding? Images. Yeah, uh-huh. Like, on my Google Images, it'll say, like, it says page two, and then Tina Fey's in the first row, and then the second row underneath her is Barbara Felton. See, I'm on I'm the iPad, so it's all just one big, long page. It's not divided up. Oh, uh, I see. All right. But, yeah, I'm not seeing Barbara Felton, but I, I would like to. I like Barbara yeah. The Carpenters. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Only just begun. Well, what happens when you type in Larry Farish? What kind of images show up? I don't know. It's probably not good. I try not Ooh. to Google myself too much. Well, this will be a fun game. Let's just type in people's names and see what kind of images show up. All right, let's, let's see. Let's make a good podcast. Larry, Larry Ferry from the Google Images. Uh, okay. And Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah. Uh, Lemieux. Backpage and, Press. And LCS. LCS Hockey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> look at that guy with the guitar. Do you see that guy? Yeah, I don't. That's uh, Larry Graham. I don't Larry know who that Graham. Is. And then there's some elderly gentlemen with beards. Okay. Yes. Neither one or me. I don't know who all of these people are. Yeah. Larry well, how about that? And uh, right down below, there's uh, I see uh, what's his name, John Belushi, with his college sweatshirt on. Oh, interesting. Oh, look, oh, Larry, keep going way down. Do you see Larry King? Free Larry King. Larry King? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> there you are at the mall, too. Oh, look at that. Where? The mall at the mall. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see it, yeah. But, yeah, you want to see the free Larry King shirt, you can get on there and take in Larry Farish. Yeah. That's our buddy Captain Jack just wearing it. The mall at the mall. Look, it's Cousin Brandon. Where? Oh. Keep going, That's, the Brown Olympics. Want... Cousin Brandon. Well, why is my name associated with Cousin Brandon photos? Uh, I don't know, but I thought you would be happy about that. I'm not happy about that at all. Uh, I mean, a little bit. Wow, this is interesting. Okay. Yeah. You type in my name, it'll just be that computer guy, you know? Well, no, well no, what if we type in Michael Paul, Dell? Uh, probably still be the computer guy. His, his middle name's probably Paul, too, and I'll have to add another name to my name. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of cats come up. <laughs> uh, well, I see... I see your, uh, uh, you know, your Dobie Gillis picture there, and oh, but uh, right away the first first picture, bang, that other Michael Dell guy. Then yeah, my Dobie yeah. Gillis, John Churchfield, and then nothing but the Dell computer guy, jerk. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. at least somebody's making something out of that name. <laughs> What's this? Uh, the woman. <laughs> well, like I said, just like Shakespeare, maybe in you know, a couple hundred years they'll think I invented the computer. Uh, Oh, now if you keep scrolling down a little bit, uh, there's a picture of Bart Simpson. Do you see that one? Uh, he's huh? writing on the blackboard over and over again, I will not question my liberal puppet masters. <laughs> nice. That, that ties in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're getting, there's a picture from 30 Rock. Uh, so that's, I think that's that one I use on Puck Daddy, maybe. Like the peen eye? Nah. <laughs> wow, so this is, a, yeah, this is a good time for a podcast. Just give away and let just tell, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, describe just describe what comes up under your Google image. Yeah. So, all right, Mike Dell. I think we're out of show, Larry. Yeah. You're way out of show. All right, so uh, we got to thank, uh, thank security guy Irv for calling in. Yeah. Irv and the A. We got a major minority for doing the yeah monologue. major minority. Thank him for the monologue, and uh, don't forget to check out Irv's show, the Super Great Internet Show, Friday at six, and the Ed Show tomorrow night. Is that ten or ten thirty? Uh, 10. Yeah. 10 p.m. on the East Coast, yeah. 7 p.m. in the West Coast. And or I hate to break it to the, to the kids there, but I think we're going to have having a uh, time slot change for the Ed because of his Santa job. Uh, he might be working nights, so he might have to be uh, doing the Ed show in the afternoons. Mm, so that that'll makes be, sense. Yeah, that'll be great. That makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. also, uh, go to backpagepress.com, order your T-shirts. Yeah. Mike Bell's going to get one. T-shirt. Because we want to get the Ed to be the top-selling T-shirt at Backpage Press. That's our goal. You understand? I guess that's the goal. But uh, you know, yeah. keep in mind that you know, even if you're not a fan of the Ed, the, the Backpage Press, they got all kinds of great T-shirts over there. 
Yeah, that's really true. Cool. Yeah, buy, buy any. Buy your uh, Czech Republic T-shirts, uh, Feinsters Union, all your other ones. Yeah, he has a nice. I like that Chara shirt he made. That's a really nice Chara shirt. You know? I hate the Bruins, though. Yeah, that's the problem with it. But uh, what about that um, Cheever shirt? You like Cheever? Isn't that Jerry Cheever? Yeah, Jerry Cheevers. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of Jerry Cheevers. But hey, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't like the Bruins. I was, I was tempted uh, on the Cam Neely shirt there. I like the Cam Neely, but old school Bruins, I'm not a big fan of. But um, yeah. but also, if you buy enough Backpage Press T-shirts, you know what's going to happen, Larry? Larry, the T-shirt, it's going to happen. We once again, you know, there's no reason that there would be Larry the T-shirt. Nobody's going to buy Larry the T-shirt. Larry the T-shirt's happening. The plan, I don't the want to see the Larry the T-shirt. I wouldn't even buy but, Larry the T-shirt. Yeah, I would buy two to make up for it. But Larry the T-shirt's going to be great. So yeah, go to backpagepress.com and uh, check t- check out uh, Corey's work over there because he's a good guy and once again the official sponsor of LCS Hockey. So go over there and support him because if he takes off and becomes successful, he's going to give me a job. How about that, Mike? Though? Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. 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 No more day job for either one of us. Sweet. But uh, all right. So next week, uh, I don't know. We'll come up with some sort of Thanksgiving-y thing, and uh, yeah, something. Why and, don't uh, we cook a turkey gonna... live on the air? That'd be fun. <laughs> well, look at you with the turkey sound effect right away. Or, or what about, uh, remember Dave Letterman, he would always call it, he would uh, answer Butterball's hotline, turkey hotline on Thanksgiving? No. Like people, he'd, he'd patch into their network and, you know, he'd get the calls of people needing help with their turkeys and he'd just give them wise-ass answers. Well, how about this? Anybody listening to the show now, uh, go, go to damashek.com and submit any sort of Thanksgiving food questions and we'll answer them next week on the show. Yeah. How about yeah. that? If you, need, if you need help on... Uh, you know, how to make something or how to, you know, do your place settings or any sort of thing like that, we'll answer them for you. Uh, and, and right away, what did I think of, Larry, when you when you said that at uh, the pre tape live call-in show? Yes. And yeah, this, this week, call next week for Thanksgiving. Yeah, so that's that. Because when it comes down to it, Mike Dell, when it comes to food, there's nobody on the planet better than you. And when it comes yes. to etiquette, I'm the man. So that's right. we'll help you out. Yeah, you, I know my food. Go, yeah, and your I know my play settings, so your your Thanksgiving won't be all fucked up thanks to us. So mm-hmm. look for that next week. But uh, we're out of show, so thank you, Mike Dell. And uh, I guess that's it. We'll be back next Wednesday. Until then, pass the gin, Governor. <laughs>